Hey guys, I love doing stand-up comedy and I want you to come see me do stand-up comedy. I have a new hour and a half and I'm going to be doing it August 16th. Wisconsin, Chicago, where are you? Chicago, you got to make the drive in. I'm going to be at the Paps Theater in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, August 16th. My opening act is going to be Marquette basketball head coach Buzz Williams. He's going to be introducing me. He confirmed. It's going to be... An amazing night of comedy, August 16th, Paps Theater, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you live anywhere in Wisconsin or if you live in Illinois and it's within a two and a half hour drive, please, let's do this. Let's get this on the very next night, August 17th, Michigan. Where are you? August 17th, Royal Oak Theater in Detroit, August 17th in Detroit at the Royal Oak Theater. Please. Go buy yourself some tickets and come to these shows. Thank you. And I can't wait to see you, meet you, and shake your hand. All of my shows, as always, meet and greet for everybody. August 16th, Paps Theater in Milwaukee. August 17th, Royal Oak Theater in Detroit. I love you guys. I cannot wait to see you out there. Make the drive. I'm getting on an airplane. You can't get in a car. Let's do it. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you want a battle, it's either that you will or you won't. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Uh, it'll be about an hour. Really? An hour, probably longer because you fascinate me, Steve Lillywhite. Steve Lillywhite is my name. Steve Lillywhite is my nature. L- silly White. Silly on White. Twitter. My, fi- my finger slipped when I. Uh, <laughs> when <laughs> That's I, true. It really did. I was trying to get. I was. I, I was. Um, I was Silly White. White way before that with uh, when AOL came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm now about to give away my email address. I'm still on AOL. Yeah. You're still, I'm still on AOL. And AOL. more is in it. Yeah, my last name is in my email address. Yeah, did you see my tweet to you today? I did. Why were uh, you not? Tick? You weren't born in 1937. So my why father thir- was born in 1937. Is that why you? And my put father 37. Used, yes, and my father Ooh. used to race cars. Ah. And the number on his race car when I was a kid was 37. Wow. So when it came time to pick numbers for baseball, everyone's arguing over the eight and the two and the five. I right. said I'll be 37, 37, and everybody went, "All right." Nobody argues over the 37. So that's your lucky number. Uh, yeah, I guess. It's just, it's a good number. It's a prime number. Yeah, and you can never put it on uh, roulette, though, can you? No, you cannot, which makes me get up and move from the roulette wheel. I've got this great way of winning at roulette. Oh, how's that, honey? Because when I was doing the killers this year, uh, last year, I I was staying at the hotel, and I would walk past the roulette every night. And I would go up to the roulette table, and I would look at a number, and i think, okay, my birthday. I would not put any money on it. And then... When the wheel went round and the ball didn't land on my spot, I won. So you didn't it was, lose? It was fucking... Gain, no, win. I won every time because I yeah. didn't lose. If you came out zero, you're equal. Exactly. That's a very smart thing to do. I love that. People at roulette wheels, if you put... Sometimes if walking through, and I don't think we don't... I like how you slipped in when I was with the killers. Like, we're not going to circle back to that. Okay. Steve Lillywhite, you have produced, like, the soundtrack to my life. Oh, you're the best. No, I, I am the best. I, I, yes. Let's expound on that. <laughs> Uh, if you want to order anything from Amazon, uh, go to jmore.com, eliminate the Amazon. See, these are called toolbars. You probably uh, produce entire albums using your computer sometimes. No, 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 You're no. You're real no. to real still, like the old... Uh, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm both um, Luddite and futuristic at the same time. I like that. Uh, I like there's a riot happening over... <laughs> Mick Jagger once said to me, Keith's really Luddite, you know. Keith. Keith. Keith's yeah, really, really Luddite. Luddite. And I didn't really know. I had to look it up. What does it what? mean, slow? Luddite is, is someone who doesn't understand technology. But if Keith Richards understands technology, we all need new jobs. I know. I, I actually introduced Keith Richards to Robert Cray. And that was like the, the newest blues he'd even heard. Ever. Ever. Yeah. But that's what makes Keith great because he is very much true to his thing. And, and in fact, you know, 
Keith Richards never let drugs or alcohol overtake the love of music. Now, he writes Which, that you in know, his book. you can't say that's about Jimi Hendrix. Or most people or in music. Or lots of people in music. Yeah, you there's know. a lot. You could tell by the album when they were fucked up because the album, it stinks. Yeah. And, and in most bands. And Keith wrote that in his book. And you go, well, that sounds like an addict defending himself. But you actually produced... Rolling Stones albums, so you can first hand the music was yeah. his mistress, his lord. Yeah, it was no, the son. absolutely. And um, and okay, his heroin taking was was a very short period of time. And he did say it, it, the, the the fact that he went to Switzerland to have his blood changed is an urban myth. Yeah, I like. What about think, the Richard Gere one? Is that an urban myth? No, I'm the one. I gave him the gerbil. <laughs> oh, you did give it. It was him. with me. I, I don't know how I get out of that story every time. But you time. know what? The His great name was Mabel, right? The, the gerbil's name was Mabel. Yeah. But the great thing about the gerbil story is that it actually appeared before the internet. Pretty much, yes. we all knew about that. That's amazing. I mean, it's an incredible. I was in New Jersey. <laughs> You were in England. <laughs> yes. And we all, and we all knew Gere about the gerbil. Had to go to the hospital with a gerbil stuck in his ass. That yeah. was a great urban myth. The other one I heard as a kid was Rod Stewart was rushed to the hospital because he had a quart of cum in his stomach and he had poisoning. He had oh, cum poisoning. Boring. I heard about Little Kim. Little same Kim? Little Kim, same story. And the other one when I was a kid, my sister told me, El- she goes, you realize Elton, jo- this is her words, right. uh, at parentheses, S-I-C, sick. She goes, do you re- did you hear? And I go, what? She said, Elton John's retarded. <laughs> I go, what? He goes, yeah, he's retarded. He's like a retarded oh, person. I actually have a true Elton John story that, 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 that uh, I can't say it. All right. Well, let's talk no, about it's... my Amazon ad. jmore.com, <laughs> click the Amazon banner. But this one involves you, Steve Lillard. Really? How, really? This is kismet. I'm checking these as I'm putting the baby down. Uh, I look through these and it says, hey, JJ, I just went to jmore.com, click the Amazon banner, bought Oswald the Octopus DVD for my two-year-old. I remember you mentioning it on one of your recent podcasts. It's truly a great cartoon. I didn't go Sarah Brady big, but every bit counts. Keep up the good work. Hey, try to get Steve Lillywhite on the podcast. He keeps going on Kevin and Bean and he's amazing. Put your name on it. <laughs> Geronimo Cabrero, oh, California. Well, I, I did. And here you are. How Here I is that? That's I oh, mean the fantastic. odds of that are zero. Yep. Yep. That's crazy. I, I did have uh well you say Kevin and Bean helped put this together, but I I I actually had people tweet me saying you should go on and tweeted both of us and then yeah. we we you said follow me and blah 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 yeah, blah blah. We got it together. And I'm weird because I only ever follow one hundred people. I've got a hundred yeah. people, and it's like people say follow me and but I even say, that's a lot. But that means I've got to drop someone. So get... you O C D about numbers? No, that's the only thing. That's so weird. The amount of people you follow. Yes, I just, it just looks nice with 100 there. You take good photos, rock and roll photos. You seem to be obsessed with Juarez. Juanes. Juanes. Juanes, I'm doing his next album. Okay, but that's one thing, and I understand that. And, and he's handsome. Huge, he's very handsome, and there's a huge uh, Latino audience that needs to be represented, and they need that Steve Lillywhite, you know, U2, Unforgettable Fire Boy. I didn't do Rolling Unforgettable Stones. Fire. Do your Lanois. fucking homework. That was Daniel Lanois. <laughs> yes, and yeah. Brian Eno. Daniel Lanois was really the engineer on Unforgettable Fire. They wanted um, Brian Eno to produce it. And he said, well, I'm working with this Canadian guy, Danny Lanois, and, uh, and brought him down. And, um, and actually, I remember saying to Adam Clayton, God, there's this guy going around saying he's like producing your record. But he's, I thought he was just the engineer. And Adam said, well, no, he's, he's really good. No, he's a lovely guy. He turned out to be pretty good. He did turn out to be pretty good. <laughs> Although Brian Eno's my favorite. I love Brian Eno because he'll talk about the size of a girl's tits as well as the most intelligent thing in the world. What's more intelligent about the size of a girl? I mean, what's more intelligent than the than tit size? That would have been a great comeback if I just nailed it all in one <laughs> yeah, shot. Yeah, that would have been. We could take what's it again. What's more intelligent than talking about the size of a girl's tits? Yeah, my favorite. I, that's like, what, a, that's like Damone from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Hey, <laughs> what's more intelligent talking about a girl's tits? What makes five pounds of fat look really good? Nipples. Nipples. I love that. Uh, so, yeah, you produce, you're producing Juan, Juanes. 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 However, every photo you take of him on your Twitter page, there's somebody light years more famous exactly next to you or behind you that you're ignoring. That was Ziggy Marley. Yeah, fucking Ziggy, Ziggy Marley, Marley is right behind you. I know. Isn't that and, cool? And you're like all over this handsome Latino guy. I'm like, hey, Steve, Ziggy Marley. Ziggy Marley. He's right behind you. I he's know. wearing, he's got the rise, everything. Yeah. He looks like Ziggy Marley. I he's know. the real deal. I didn't realize that. No, he's. I think he's going to do a uh, do do a duet with Juanes. Juanes. The album. Well, one photo, you and Juanes are holding one another. Uh, beach volleyball. That photo. You guys have your shirts off playing beach volleyball. 
Uh, Val, up. Val Kilmer, Tom Oiled Cruise, up. right behind you. Yeah. You don't even know it. You know, you have no idea it's I happening. Didn't I didn't know that, no. What is a producer? And Jared, Jared fucking Leto, he's too handsome as well. He's why am I working with these handsome men? Uh, cause I don't know. And why am I wearing pink? I don't mind that you're wearing pink. The fact that you put it together with red pants is a little alarming. Uh, 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 Go on. Go on. No, there's another word for pink. I was salmon. Yeah. <laughs> pink and, but that's red. These are red. No, actually, these are what I wear all the time. Yeah. This is just... I thought, you know, I you're not going to take a picture. You know what? This is a podcast. When you produce Dirty Work, the Rolling Stones album, then almost I broke up the band. I as I say, the worst ever Rolling Stones album. Until uh, no, the I next d- one. I disagree. Until Bridges the next to Babylon, one. I think, is much worse. Yeah. That's, that's paint by numbers garbage. Until the next one. What was no. the next one after that? No, Steel Wheels was after Steel, that. Steel Wheels was, was great. No, Steel Wheels was before mine. No, 88. Was it? Yeah, 89, 88. 89. I Same know. as Time Out of Mind, Bob Dylan. Ah, uh, right, you see. Oh, excuse me, same as Oh Mercy by Bob Dylan, oh, which is okay. tremendous. Yeah. That was produced by? Lanois. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's a, at that time he was, doing the Neville, he was doing the Neville Brothers, yeah. which is a brilliant record yeah. as well. That's, what was the Neville Brothers album he did? Called? I don't know. I never, the I never scooped moon. their you stuff never heard up. The Neville Brothers album. But I hear other bands uh, taking like Neville Brother tracks and putting it on their albums and, you know, like uh, Eyes of the Maker and stuff. And like... Oh, Dylan, right. Dylan pulled a couple things. Yeah. Uh, Willie Nelson, Teatro, Lenoir. Yeah. Like they pulled Neville Brother drum t- tracks that never got used. Right. And that was in Eyes of the Maker with Willie Nelson. And you're like, oh, like Willie Nelson. It seems like some of these artists, I'm talking about you now, Steve Lillywhite, White, Lenoir, right. forget it. But, uh, I, and I do want to know how competitive producers are. Must, do you guys lobby for bands? Well, there's the good guys and the bad guys. Lenoir, good guy? Eno, Lenoir, Lily White e- e- seemed to be the big three. Well, there was a... Um, Mutt Lang? I said that like I Norm MacDonald. for Mutt, Mutt Langer. Yeah. There, there was a, a, um, a friend of mine. I was thinking about doing a U2 book with, um, with Eno, Lenoir, me, and Flood. Yeah. And now he's an engineer turned... Yeah, producer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, okay. but someone said, you know what that, album, what that book should be called? U2 by Us Four. That's a great It's name. a great title for a book. Yeah. You two by us four. But to try and get it together is going to be a logistical nightmare, Jay. The first thing you... Yeah, it's true. The first thing you did with you two... And I'm, for the listener, you got to keep in mind, there, Steve Lillywhite's resume, uh, if I, we could do eight podcasts and talk about one album per podcast <laughs> and I would dissect your brain. Well, we could probably could, yeah. Um, let's start with I've done more than eight albums though I know I'm just in a hypothetical eight good number lucky number eight Yogi Berra that's if you're Chinese Uh, yes because it ends on the upstroke he's right Matty boy what's your problem the Chinese have that because they don't have God the Chinese because they took God out of they're godless people the Chinese really are godless people yeah they are but what do they Steve Lillywhite ladies and gentlemen Uh, you know I'm a big atheist and 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 very proud of why shouldn't you be life's worked out great for you it's one big big happy accident I'm very proud of that Um, but but, you know (laughs) the the interesting thing is that you take gods out of a society like uh, in China which they did, and all they do, people in general, just replace it with 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 crystals and and all that other stuff. What do you replace it with? Um, when you have to when you have to surrender well, something, do I have to replace it with anything? No, I well, mean the only the only thing I think is that, uh, uh, and you know, I think two people discussing something is probably going to be a a, a higher. You're going to get a better result than one person. Yeah. So you know. Uh, uh, the only requirement is, um, you know, a higher consciousness because there's yeah, more than one brain. Because at work. there's more, more than one brain working. So but other than that, I don't honestly. I really don't. Because I grew up in England where there was no religion. Right. I want to talk about music though. I don't want to talk about atheism because it's. I'm not trying to convert You'll you. You'll lose some people. Huh? I lost a lot of people on Twitter. Oh no, a lot of atheists. I've had yeah. my priest on. I've had great. I've had. Are you religious? I'm Catholic. I converted. You're, oh, you're Catholic. You converted, I converted to, Catholic. to Catholicism. I saw that I on, dig your, it, yeah. on your Wikipedia. But what I was going to say, when you, uh, so you believe- have to, hypoth- in a hypothetical situation, if right. you have to surrender to maybe to a higher power, what do you use as the higher thing? Is it just the, the greater consciousness of humanity? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing. I think that's know. terrific. I mean, it's. Fuck. We're not in the recruiting business. But I'm, I I'm, I'm very uh, lucky that, that I wasn't. Um, what, one of my children's uh, mothers, were. she's Catholic, and she wanted my my son to go and get that thing when you're eight and you have to admit yeah. some, you know, you have to admit something that you've Jacking done bad. Yeah. And it's like, 
That poor boy. <laughs> it's terrible. Did you go and make something up? Or was it my daughter? One of those things. Maybe it was my daughter. You know what my wife's was? What? She went in and she didn't commit any sin. She was yeah. like goody two-shoes. Yeah. So she said to the priest, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned, but it's my first confession. I lied. And she knew that by telling the priest that she lied was in itself a lie. And therefore, that was the sin on like the spot. It. Boom. Your wife's very intelligent. Oh, you have no idea. Yeah. All right. So you walk in. Uh, you two boy was that the first you two album? That was the first. Yes, that was the first okay. album. That is an astounding piece of work. So what I want to know first off, they're new. You're new. No, I'm not new. I'd already had some hits, uh, such as uh, such Susie? as uh, Susie and the Banshees, yeah. Hong Kong Garden, uh, X. I don't know if you, Hong Kong Garden. Go ahead. A classic record. Yeah, I'm, ding, just, I'm ding, ding, naming ding, them. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. Um, Don't let my face belie what I say. Go okay, ahead. Hong Kong guy. You're too young for this, you see. You were in about, you were about five. I'm an audiophile. Keep going. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Hong Kong Garden, Making Plans for Nigel by... I don't know. XTC. XTC, yes. XTC, I'd done... Uh, uh, All right, so you had a little... You had heat, they did not. I had heat. I, I was the, the... I was second on U2's list for producers. The first guy they Mud had Lang. was M- Martin Hannett, who produced Joy, Joy Division. <laughs> and, um, well, it would have been a very different album. If you yeah, had Joy it would have been. Yeah. And in fact, he did produce... It would have been morbid. A, yeah, a U2 song called 11 O'Clock TikTok. And then Ian Curtis died. I, I've told this story before. Not but here. Ian Curtis... Um, New set of ears right here, brother. Okay. Ian Curtis from Joy Division committed suicide. Yeah. And uh, U2... And, and Martin Hannett was going to do the U2 album. He'd done one single... And he was going to finish off the album. But in fact, when, when Ian Curtis committed suicide, he decided against doing the U2 album because he was too, like, fucked up. Yeah. U2 went back to their uh, list of producers. I was second on the list. So I then flew over. I met them. And um, the rest is history. Was that recorded in Ireland? Yep, yep, yep. They, they were the What's first band to record, really, first Irish rock band to record in Ireland. What's the, the number one job you have when you get to the studio... Because then, uh, you know, they were still chasing it down. They weren't U2 yet. They were like this oh, band that just started. 18 years old. Yeah. I was. So what's your and number one oldest. job? When you get in the room with these guys, what's your first impression well, of Well, my, my number one job for me is to do it in the first place. That's a really important because once I'm committed, I'm all in. Okay. Because I'm not the sort of person who, you know, there are a lot of producers in the world. And everyone does it. Everyone makes good records and bad records. So I'm not criticizing anyone by saying this because who you know but there are and i'm there are some producers who really take a lot of pleasure in saying oh my god i had to fire the drummer you see i would never do that i would really think long and hard before i did the record can i get the best thing out of this drummer because i'm complete faith and i completely love bands so it's like do you not take the job if you're on the fence yeah, about Yeah, if I'm man? on the fence about There's someone. There's never been a money gig. No, 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 no. Okay. Not since 1983. <laughs> <laughs> Which one no, was it? Uh, it was, it was a, an English girl singer called Toya. Toya. T-O-Y, and, and, you know, she was lovely, and I, maybe I did it for the wrong reasons. And, um, but, yeah, I realized that I have to do it for art. For me, art is, the, art is my, um, my higher power. Good. Art. I mean, I, there's art everywhere. Let's talk about boy. Boy. You meet the band. What's your first impression of the band? That they... I, I mean, you, how old are your children? Uh, ten and two. Ten and two. Okay. Well, teenage boys are... Uh, that They don't have much of a personality. And um, Larry was 16. Bono was 18. And, <laughs> and I remember sitting... <laughs> <laughs> I remember sitting back. I went to see a gig of theirs in I- in Ireland, and uh, and sitting with them after the gig, and they were just just sat there. I mean, they just you know that Bono subsequently has turned into his father, and he's fantastic. Yeah. You know, he's a real laugh. The opera fan. Yeah, he's 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 great. And um, but my, my first thought was that they you know there was passion there, and and Bono. Were they dullards on stage or just no, off no, stage? No, 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 just off on stage. On stage, they destroyed and, it, right? Yeah, on stage, they were punk. You know, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they, they, they listened That's to very what people few forget. records. Duff McKagan sat where you are. Yeah. 
And I said, that the, I don't think the listener knows. Duff was a full fucking yeah. punk. That, I got, you two I, were punks. Yeah. I got 20 minutes into the Duff McGagan one. Which they is, were punks. Yeah. They were total Well, punks. that was what they, you know. Going to Red Rocks, waving a white flag. I was, was there. Punk. That was that punk. Was, that, that was one of the most incredible moments of my life at Red Rocks. Yeah, it's too bad he had a mullet when he did it. Yes. You know, he looked like Jeremy Yager for the first time <laughs> around. But other than that. But you know, the Red Rocks gig was not going to happen until 15 minutes before. This is the story. I was there recording it. And the band were big, but not that big. Right. And they had invested in a helicopter to film. You know, when you get into, like, we're making a video and there's a helicopter involved, you're in for a little bit of money. Yeah, that right? also means there's coke. Coke? I don't get that. If you do a lot of cocaine, you come up with great ideas like, let's just no, get no, a helicopter, no, 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 no. film the whole fucking thing No, in Bono, the sky. Came, Bono came up with a lemon. He never took coke. Okay. You know, no... It's an overall that's, rock a, that's and roll. an interesting theory. It was though. a rock and roll assumption, not a not a U two assumption. No, 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 no. But you know, you may have a little bit of a. I think the. I would always say Sgt. Pepper's would have been a better album without drugs. I know it's controversial. Uh, I don't think it's controversial. I think it's a salient point. I think it's debatable. I don't think they could have gotten. To I don't Sgt. think Sgt. Pepper's is that good, though. I think I mean, Abbey Road blows it out of the water. Yeah. Abbey Road is so perfect. Yeah. Uh, if you can start an album with Maxwell Silver Hammer. And not lose the audience, not lose the room. Because that right. song's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> if you could start, isn't that what leads off Abbey Road? Abbey Road, I can't remember. It's Max, know. it's fucking Ringo. Is it? But if you can start an album off with yeah. a Ringo song and hold everyone together, it's like, obviously, it's pretty good. Did you see McCartney do For the Benefit of Mr. Kite on no. Colbert? No, but. First I've, time he's done it, this tour since. I've um, seen him a bunch, and uh, it's astounding. McCartney's great. That How band, great I'm using that band on with Juanes, the Juanes. bass player and drummer. Your boyfriend, Juanes. Me and him, mate. You two, uh, no personality because they were teenage oh, boys. Here we are, however, back on board, however, yes. musically. M musically, they were. Uh, Larry had great ideas, was not a great. Um, uh, you know, he was still young. He didn't, he couldn't execute those, those ideas so perfectly well. I mean, Adam, you know, it was. Larry only, Drummer or Larry? Uh, Larry the, the Drummer. Edge. Okay. No, the What's edge the Edge's is, real name? Dave. Dave. That's Dave right, Dave. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so La Larry was, had great parts, though. But his, you know, his dad would come and collect him at the, <laughs> from the studio at night. But musically, what was it that made you say, I'm going to be all in with these four with guys? These guys. Because um, you, you could have done anything. Well, I was doing Psychedelic Furs at the same time. I it's was... a heartbreak beat, and it feels like love. Which one's that? Heartbreak beat. Was that Psychedelic Furs? Yeah. Oh no! You see, I I, I did psychedelic first when they. Were, right, let's let's go back to you. The real beautiful quick. chaos. Like, it was the, their with first the good album. old days was, before uh, he moved to St. Mark's Place in New York and tried to yeah, look I'm like. Still, I'm his friend on um, on Facebook though. That means you're really friends. Talk. That's how you mean you're really friends. That's, I know. That's it how you know is. It. You know, my favorite thing on Facebook is when it says someone's birthday. I always say I always post on their wall saying happy birthday to you on Facebook is literally the least I can do. I like that. <laughs> That's good. Lily that is White. a good one. I like it. Steve Lillywhite <laughs> produced the Rolling Stones. You too. Uh, Travis, uh, and Travis. we're talking about uh, Facebook jokes. Facebook jokes, yes. Musically, you too. Uh, uh, yes. I'm going to get this out of you, you son oh, of a bitch. God. What was it about them that made you want to do the album? Um, Something drew you to them. What are they, I don't up know. Until I, that point, I, I, they analysis. Is this what we're... What, yeah, yes, up until American. that point, they recorded November, the one album. November? I'm asking you. October? <laughs> You're Help a me. wanker. I am a wanker. Do your fucking uh, homework I've been, first. I've been up since four in the morning. Oh, I'm so sorry. Leave me um, November was their second album. And Boy was the first. Yes. Okay. So they couldn't have done November. All right. Jesus Christ. Leave me alone. You did their first album. <laughs> and I did October as well. But what was it about them that made you decide <laughs> to go all in? I go all in whatever I do. It wasn't for the chat. I also went all in with uh, the comedians. Koya. Who? The, exactly. Oh. I mean, you know, I don't know. Okay. I, um, the, although, Google the chameleons. There's a no. lot of people who are fans I'm not, of the I'm like a dog with a toy in my mouth at this point. Oh. I'm not letting you... What, the, what made me... Uh, there was something about, I think, um, Bono's intensity. Uh, Edge... Although I didn't... I couldn't really tell until I got in the studio with them. Because, as I say, there wasn't much personality at that meeting. Um, yeah. Edge is a scientist. We like to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Teenage boys, yeah. Yeah, 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 you know. I, right. I've got... I've no got, thanks. No yeah. thanks more. Well, no, that's a Cockney accent. They're Irish. I wasn't doing you too. I was doing these other guys I know. <laughs> 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 Do you know the difference between uh, Bono and God? 
God doesn't walk around Ireland pretending he's Bono. That's Bono. That's true. Um, let's let's talk about the songs on that album are so astounding, and I want to ask you very specific questions. Uh, oh the Electric Company, Electric Co., as it's written, yeah, yeah. Uh, when they performed that at Staples Center two years ago, I lost my mind. Like I, I cried. I couldn't believe the visceral response I had. Hang on. Hearing the electric. It was at Staples Center two years ago. Two well, years ago, it was, they were on tour with the Claw. It was the Vertigo tour then. I apologize. Yes, Vertigo tour. Whenever it was. Yeah. Uh, wow, you're really gonna. You're not letting me off the hook for anything. No, I like November. It. When they, <laughs> <laughs> the U2 album at November. Oh, you know the U2 album August. <laughs> So, no, that was Canton Crows. I did an album with them. Yeah, I'm going to Although that was gonna, August and everything. Um, you did that one for the money. Um, it no! Could, it could not possibly have been for the art. Don't even try to tell me you've worked with okay. Canton Crows for the art. Round here! <laughs> I, I love Adam Durritz. You know, it's, it's funny. When I've, I'd be, until I met him, I said uh, I thought he was some sort of mystical, sort of half Rasta type guy. Yeah. And, Jewish he says, guy. and he says, yeah, I'm just a fucking Russian Jew. Yeah. And I looked at him and go, oh, yeah, you are. Did you know when you're in the studio and you hear the Electrico yes. live? I love that song, by the way. Every song on that album yeah. gets a visceral response. Anybody my age, yeah. uh, 40, I'm 42. No. Anybody, I would say, from 48 to 35, you hear any cut off of Boy yeah. live and you lose. I challenge no. you. Because there, and, 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 you know. that's when you're in your bedroom wanting to get the fuck out of that town yeah. and make something out of yourself yeah. and uncut dub and shadows oh, and tall God, trees and yeah, all this stuff. The heart. It's into the heart. Yes. Goosebumps. It's Damn. astounding when they I need play to that live. To that record. Oh, it's so. You produced an incredible I don't know. album. I never but listened to it. I always wonder on the production side in uncut dub. Uh, there's just a part where it's just the edge and uh, ding, Adam. Ding dong, dum 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 dum. But it goes for like minutes. Yeah. And now when you're in the studio, so chilled. And it's us. I just downloaded it into my phone. I'm listening on the way to work tomorrow. I'm so excited to drive to work, and I wish my drive was longer. So I could get this down, but they did it on the Vertigo tour, and it's that's when he, you know, he brings the kid up on stage and he has the kid his name, and then he goes into the heart, and then that dun 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 that starts it goes yeah. back up. This meter goes up. Now, as a producer, is the input minimal? You just get out of their way because you watch these guys playing this, and you go, "This is ballsy to do this weird uh, oh, landscapey uh, break." Uh, uh, that, they've always, you know. I mean, they were punks, but, but, but it was always art-based, you know. I mean, all of us agreed that, that, uh, that, that the sort of punk that, say, um, Duff was talking about yeah. was not necessarily what we were into because we were more into the art side of punk. So I, I, and but melody. you wanted to share it. Yeah. Duff, I had a quote that I was quoting. <laughs> As saying, but I don't remember saying it to Duff, was don't keep it so real, you keep it to yourself. And all those cool bands in Seattle right. that were so fucking cool, yeah. they're still there. Nobody knows who they are. Well, they at did. some point, you got to, well, well some better. of them, yeah, but, you know, yeah. Tad's not, the Melbourne's aren't, Flippers yeah. are so, at, at some point, you got to take the corporate teat and start sucking and yeah. give a, you got to, there has to be a little. But it's ambition. You know, that's what Bono Ambition had. bites the nails of success. A little <laughs> bit has to be given, a, you have to trade a little bit. And it seems no, like you No, no, because during that first album, there was a song called Pete the Chop, which was, um, which was, everyone was thinking was their most commercial song. And Pete the Chop never got, well, in fact, it turned into a song called Whatever Happened to Pete the Chop, which, was a, which was a B-side. But, the, but Bono said, no, we're not ready for this song yet because we can't, it's not what we want to do. Bono is so visionary. In, you know, in thinking, well, we're not ready for this yet. How do you, I don't know how you don't run out of things to do. Because they did start so punk. And songs like Out of Control, yeah. if that was played by um, Stiff Little Fingers, yep. you, you, it wouldn't be like, what are they doing that song for? It just sort of fits. It's a very quick time. And it is, they just blow right through it. Right. And even the Electrico. Like, if you just gave the Electrico to, like, Dead Kennedys or, you know, TSOL or somebody and they just plowed through it, it, it wouldn't be like, what the fuck are these guys doing? Why are they slowing it down? It would be, it's a punk song. Yeah. But it's, I, I think 
they're, they got so hugely successful, you too, that I guess what I ask you is well, if not you're... not in those days. I mean, well, Boy no, was now, not a big album. No, I'm yeah. saying now they are yeah. the biggest band that's yeah. at, right now, period. So I'm asking you, if you're going to produce them, is your job to pull them back to punk or do you allow them to be 50 no, no, gracefully? No, no, no. I'm, I'm a, I'm a uh, uh, facilitator. Yeah. You know, I don't build the ship. They build the ship. My job is to be captain of that ship. And sometimes the waters are calm. And you just let it sail. Finger on the steering wheel, just going like that. Other times, you know, you're in, in bad waters. But the clever producer sees the bad waters up ahead and steers around them. Well, how do you steer around Keith Richards bringing a gun into the studio? That was funny. He did. That was during... There was a, and actually, there was a hurricane during this is that... The, this is our helicopter. We're filming this. Yeah. Welcome to Red Rocks. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Adam Dayton. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, Red Rocks. That was fantastic. Um, how do you, uh, like, walk uh, the... Li- Keith did my- bring the gun in. To, uh, it was during the Hurricane something or other. In 90, it must have been 1987. During in- a hurricane? No, it was... You know that when there's all the news, like, beware, beware. A hurricane watch. A hurricane watch in, okay. in New York. Hurricane Jerome, I think, right? No, I'm not sure. If he just made that shit up. Don't listen to him. He's going to put some a... strange hurricane names that should never be. That should never. There was one. So recently. there was a hurricane watch. The recording in New York City. Yes, yes, and um, and Mick was his usual. Man, now it's all going to just fall apart before. Do you think there'll be a hurricane? Yeah. No, that's no. not a good Mick. No, Don't worry that, about it. <laughs> I'll nail it. You'll get it. I'll land it. <laughs> if I was on stage, I could stand up and do a good Mick. Everybody shout there, Mick New. <laughs> Keith, Manon, Keith Richards, Chante avec nous. <laughs> Keith, I have no idea what that no, means. No, it was Mick, Mick trying to uh, speak French in Montreal. Oh, right. Okay. Right now, Keith Richards is going to sing for you. Oh, right. Before Keith explodes into <laughs> I've been sober three days version of happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I like that the people of Montreal like, I'm glad Mick spoke to us in French because otherwise we would have been lost. Even though we just sang <laughs> Jumping Jack Flash <laughs> verbatim with him in English. Thank God Mick decided. <laughs> Manon, Keith Richards, Chante avec nous. Now I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so, 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 yeah, Keith... Uh, he decided uh, to uh, beat the hurricane with a gun. Yeah, well, he thought there might be anarchy <laughs> oh. in, on the streets of Manhattan. Anarchy on the streets of Manhattan. So he brought his gun in, and he spent the, uh, the evening in the studio polishing it. Uh, and the bullets. That's Keith Spann, no joke about it, right? Keith's band, it, oh, it was definitely... Musically. Keith's band when I was there. No, it wasn't. Only I, musically. Originally, it was Brian Jones' Well, band. I know that, but I mean... Uh, it's Keith be- was like the, 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 the meek rhythm guitar player. Right, but I, it's become... Oh, it's become Keith's band. There's yeah. no... No, no one else wants to be in the band for a start. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They just want to retire. He'd love to be successful without the Rolling Stones, but he can't. He was in that awful thing just recently with Dave Stewart. and We did. I like... Um, no, you didn't. She, you don't like it. No, I do. You don't like anything it, you know Mick Jagger's you know done solo. You know solo. what I just realized? The things I like were covers. That Mick's done solo. Yeah, it was like Bill Withers covers. Yeah. I'm like, that was good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. He's a great singer. And he's, he's great, but, you know, he needs the band. And, uh, and Keith would never have done... The album I did, Dirty Work... The reason Keith and Mick hated each other so much during that album was that Mick had just done She's the Boss, and which in the studio became... Stadium, stadium tour, too. Yeah, became affectionately known as that fucking disco album. You know, everyone, all the roadies and Keith were laughing about She's the Boss. And then, of course, Keith, Keith would never have done um, Talk is Cheap. If Mick hadn't done a solo record. Well, then I'm glad Mick did a solo record. Yeah, because, because Keith, Keith did a fantastic. Is great. Oh, it's a great record. I mean, great album. Look, if you've got Steve Jordan and Char- you know, Steve Jordan's. So Waddy cool. Watchell. Yeah, and uh, Charlie Drayton. Mm-hmm. Um, but Steve Jordan's great. Yeah. And now he tours with them, right? Steve Jordan tours Steve with the Jordan Stones? Tours? No, I'm asking. Who no, plays he's... bass for the Stones now? Oh, no, Steve Jordan's the drummer. That's what I meant to say. Uh, I don't know who the bass player for the Stones is. Uh, I had Bill Wyman. Keith Rich. Wow. And Bill Wyman was the first and guy to tap out. And his, he was. The, the, this is the, one of those things about People this. don't realize he was 15 years older than them. He's like so... If you think so Stone, up, but, but I went out for dinner with him and his 14-year-old girlfriend. Really? Who he th- later married. And cops. No, 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 no. We're Europeans. We love all this. We call them Lolita. 
And his son married her mother, correct? Yeah, that's right. Well, he right. was his own son-in-law. I think I said that on the Kevin and Bean. He, yes, he was his own son-in-law. And, it, and vice versa. And he sort of disappeared into it. It's a ha- that happens when you Google Google. So your computer just breaks. So people just blows up. <laughs> people think uh, the Stones are old. <laughs> you have to keep in mind Bill Wyman is actually older by a decade than the Stones. Yes, he's he's probably no 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 maybe not a decade, but he was just for the sake I of think a he's stand-up maybe comic. The, 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 no, just for the sake of stand-up comedy. It's, you stand-up know. comedy. He's he's old. Um, great bassist, uh, Bill Wyman. Ma- Sympathy for the Devil is I oh. think w- uh, a, a bass song. I love that. I yeah. think it's an entirely song built around bass. Yeah. But my favorite bass line of all time, I'll even go. Really? May, uh, you Never Give Me Your Money, I would say, would be first. You know, my favorite. Uh, By uh, Paul. Uh, give me. Yeah. Well, yeah, Paul McCartney is one of the great bass players. Super underrated. Oh, he's great, yes. But I, I, I love New Year's Day. I think New Year's. Doom, 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 doom. Now, is that how the song starts? Does, when you meet them and they want to do New Year's Day, you just put the clock away, sweetheart. Uh, when you do New Year's Day, do they come to you with the bass line and go, we're going to build around this and Bono yeah, yelling? Yeah, that, that was. Uh, Adam had the bass line. Um, Edge didn't really have. Well, no, Edge had the piano line. But the guitar was, was all jammed and I would piece it all together. Um, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Um, now, is there an anxiety that you have when you bring it to them, piece together? Do you go, I hope they like it? Or do you know this is, this I, is their vision? This is why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I mean, in those days, Bono would, would uh, I would make up some of his melodies by just piecing together. Or in those early days, I would do a lot of um, comping. Comping, which is basically, you know, Bono would sing the song eight times and I'd go through and make up, you know, all the good bits. And then he'd go away and sort of learn that and that would become... Well, this is very important what you're saying because what you cobbled together by yeah. comping is what he's locked into singing live for the next 30 years. Oh, absolutely. That becomes yeah, 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 it. Yeah, you yeah, construct yeah. what we enjoy live. Yeah. And, and in fact, now, it's funny, I, oh, I had lunch with Bono just the other day. And, when uh, you get him on this, po- he'd be a good podcast guest, don't you think? Oh yes. Um, <laughs> but but he, he people on Twitter are going to go. Did you hear Steve Lily White's going to get Bono on more stories? <laughs> <laughs> he oh, oh silly White's by the way is my uh, my Twitter handle at silly White at silly White. Yes, Pretty I'm going to be at the Paps cool. Theater August 16th <laughs> in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please come and see me. And uh, I'm also going to be the next day, Saturday, August 17th, at the Royal Oak Theater in Detroit. And people ask me all the time, hey, how often are you in Milwaukee? Well, I'll know Saturday morning because if you guys don't come once, <laughs> but if you guys fill it up, I'll come all the time. Uh, uh, August 3rd, I'm at the Will Turn Theater. That before I heard you say that. Yeah, but it's true. It's, yeah. and, but people, it's hard. You know, Yogi, you Berra, Yogi Berra once said, catcher for the Yankees once said, if people don't want to come, we can't stop them. And that's the fact. It's much yeah. easier to stay in your house than to Buy tickets online, get in the car, find parking, and go to a theater. But I can say this, and you being a producer and having seen many, many, many live shows, yeah. it's completely worth it when you go. Oh. August 3rd, we'll turn theater, me and Adam Carolla. Oh, yeah. Come well, what on. What I want to know is, are you funny? I'm great. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. I hang my hat on that. I put my name on that. Okay. Good. You, you want to go August 3rd? Uh, Milwaukee? No, August 3rd's here. We'll turn. Uh, yes, because I leave. I play the Keith Richards size rooms. <laughs> Not the Mick Jagger sessions. Right, 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 right. It's, am- it's got to be amazing. Mick Jagger goes solo. He's doing like, you know, oh, Wembley Stadium, right. Sydney. He's a world tour. Keith uh, goes solo, and he's doing like the Will Turn, you know, yeah. uh, the, uh, what's the one in New York that I just did? Jesus criminy. Doesn't matter. Roseland Ballroom with the new right. Barbarian. And it's like, that's, that's got to be a blow to the ego a little bit. To Keith, no. No? No? I don't think anything could be a blow to Keith's ego. <laughs> is there anything that could be a blow to any other egos at this point? I, I think you have to have an ego to be up. I mean, Keith and Mick both have egos, yes. Completely different. Is that the demise? I don't of- think Edge, Bono and Edge, Bono definitely has an ego. It's, you know, it's important. But I don't really see Adam and Larry having egos as such. You need an ego. Someone needs to have a huge one. Oh, yeah. Is that why bands like Ecstasy and Travis don't have the longevity of other bands because they're a little more egoless. Travis doesn't seem like there's any egos in that band. 
tremendous band. The Man Who yeah. and the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. one you produced. Yeah, yeah, Good Feeling. A Good Feeling. Yeah, great Pretty albums. Good. Yeah. Uh, but no egos, and they I just kind of go away. Ego. No, I think it's... You need that ego to say, fuck you, I'm staying. What's next? It may be, but, but here's my, my, my favorite quote of all time, and I think this is really how... that This encapsulates what you're saying. Yes, sir. Is that there is no winning... Only not losing. Right. And a lot of artists think they've won. And they take the foot off the brake, or off the accelerator. And they obviously, as you get older, it becomes more and more difficult anyway. So basically, there's no winning. Bono doesn't think he's won. He doesn't think he's won one little thing. That's incongruous in my mind. There is no winning, only not losing. But that's incongruous... Of a th- in, of a th- in terms of the ego you're thinking Yeah, about. a huge ego and what you said is incongruous. I would think a band with enormous egos would never take their foot off the brake. And I would think the band that's smaller with no egos, like Travis seems to me like a group of fellows that just kind of want to get along. They don't really yeah. want to rock the boat too much. Oh, right. So, you're, no, so what I'm saying actually does fit in with what you're saying. Okay. It does because the, the, because the ego allows you to take your foot off the brake because you think... Because when you start, right, when you start in a band, you're, you're, you, you will do anything. But then as you get older, no, it becomes, you, 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 the e, oh, shit. It's different. It's interesting because absolutely this is Bono's, uh, you know, and, and mine as well. There is no winning, only not losing. To wear sunglasses indoors. No, that's because he's got dodgy eyes. You have to, have, right. You had to, have, and it just caught up on him during the flight tour, sure. <laughs> Uh, to wear sun, <laughs> to wear sunglasses, perfect eyesight, right up, true, right up until Oct- right up until Octung Baby, <laughs> perfect eyesight, everything's oh, cool. Right. Octung Baby, the eyes go out. That McFist though, that was a bit of a dodgy character, wasn't it? It's all right, but you got again, mm-hmm. not you know what? Pedal to the metal. Let's take this turn as fast as we can. Uh, David, not to keep referencing the podcast itself, mm-hmm. but David Lee Roth said, as kids, you have bunk beds and you put them farther and farther apart just to see how far who can jump the farthest. <laughs> and then after a while, they're so far apart, you don't remember what the game is and somebody's got a black eye another one's got a broken arm and the kids go well you know why'd you do it i don't know right. i don't even know anymore i know okay. we, there was lava on the ground or something we created in our heads but yeah. you too enormous ego have to uh, yes but also there there has to be winning you have to think you have won there has to be something but they don't honestly really they, they absolutely but i you know it's like every time the band's that the, the band go in to, to re you know, because the band that made Boy is not the band that made War, but a little bit. But then the Joshua Tree is very different. And Actung Baby is a complete... Actung Baby, to me, is the best album of the 90s. Better than Nevermind, better than all of it. Yeah, I, except for one thing. There's one song on that which I worked on, which makes me... Let me guess. Which go makes ahead. me twitch. Every time I hear... Is it... And let me guess. It's is not it, Actung is it, Baby. I know, but don't, don't it tell me. It's never been on that album. It, 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 I think that because the, it doesn't fit with the tone I think of the, the album. The term brown, you know, when you think of just like this color, it's just so. I don't know. You know the song. I guess it's I the don't. worst song on that album. One. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a <laughs> terrible song. No. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I really don't know. Who's gonna ride your fucking wild horse? Are you out of your mind? I hate that song. That's a great. Who's no. gonna drown in your blue sea? Who's gonna ride your wild horses? Who's, Who's going to fall at the foot of the... Of the... Yes. No. You know what I thought the lyric was? Yeah. Who's going to fall in front of me? Which is less ego, better song. Right. Maybe. I'll, I'll have a word. Foot, foot we'll of... redo it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but when I found out via Twitter, yeah. somebody goes, it's actually, it's JJ, the, yeah. fall at the foot of the... the I'm like, mm, oh, that's kind of douchey. Who's going to fall in front of me? I thought was good. Like, who's going to throw themselves... There was a story about that, which um, apparently... Great song. No, I, I mean, a pretty good song, but it's just, uh, it was never realized, to put it that way. They don't play it now. Heaven's live. White Rose, they The Doors You Open, I Can't Close. Beautiful. Yeah. But, but the, 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 yeah, anyway, I don't know. I worked on that one song for What is it about? You don't like it? I think it's just so, it's brown. It's just so, everything, it's just so dark and just not very... <sighs> I love the guitar. I love that. There's a, there's a very specific fuzz on that guitar yeah. that's not on other songs that I really dig. It fits. That wouldn't be the one I thought 
No, that was the one that I would definitely not have on the What other songs did you work on on the album? On that album, I did Even Better Than The Real Thing. <gasps> I did. I like, that's a good one. Uh, Give me one more chance to ride on the waves that you bring. <laughs> holy shit. Anybody that wants, look, I make fun of Bono more than anybody. Yeah. But holy shit. The guy can write a fucking song. He can. Unbe- let me g- give me one more chance to ride on the waves yeah. that you bring. And you know what? I've listened to uh, most of the new album, and, and I think the lyrics are... Because I'm not sure if the lyrics were so... God, these things get... Yeah, I'm not going to say anything more. But, but he's written some great lyrics on this new album. You're not going to say... You're going to say something positive, and you pulled it away like you were going to trash the guy. No, no, no. I, 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 I think maybe, you know, when he's got something to say, he says it really well. And uh, sometimes he doesn't have much to say. And then he, do, you know... He, then he has fun. He goofs off. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if people like you two goofing off so much. I think like, like, pop, is pop goofing off? No. Or is that pop being ambitious and... Uh, no, not, pop's I, a pretty good record. Actually, I think it's... I, I think it got a bad rap at the it, time. It got a bad rap. I, I think it's got some really great... I think Gone is an astounding song. Oh, God, song. but live now. They yeah. do... Go, Gone is fantastic. Miami's That's, great. Gone's yeah. great. I love uh, those two. Yeah. Miami's just fun. Yeah. It's just a fun tune. But Gone, I'll put up there with... No, Gone is one I of the great songs. The, and they still yeah. play it live. That's the sign of a great U2 you song. You hurt yourself, you hurt your lover. Yeah. Then you discover what you thought was freedom was just greed. What a great mantra. You know, people slag for, off Bono for his lyrics. And he's No, he's a great lyricist. And I will say yeah. this. I, I do make fun of Bono a lot. Uh, you know, and I, I, I talk... I have a hard time... Shut up! I have a hard time with uh, bands telling me who to vote for, which charities to get involved with. Tell me, don't tell me to take out my cell phone in the middle of a concert. Yeah. Like I'm here to get, like, hey, Springsteen, you're the billionaire. Why don't you bring canned goods to the show? Because right. apparently my favorite charity <laughs> is Springsteen because all my money went to you. Now I got to right. bring Del Monte Green Beans into the concert. Yeah. Um, but I will say, as far as my life, is Springsteen, Dylan, Bono, astounding. You listen to some, look, for the listener, don't look up Rolling Stone lyrics because they're not good. No. It is a rhyming well, this is dictionary. What, this is my, um, my, my gripe about Led Zeppelin. People say, oh, Zeppelin. I think Robert Plant is one of the worst lyric writers ever. Uh, I heard he was a real dick. Robert Plant? I heard he was an astounding dick. You know, I, re- I like... We well, should know, care no about problem it. with Difficult. Difficult artists are great. Yeah, but if you're difficult to the point of Led Zeppelin not getting together, if Jimmy Page no, is going to no, play... No, Sting with- is far worse. Sting wouldn't get the police back together Go again. on. I'm all about slamming Sting. Sting. Let, if you're so much of a dick that Led Zeppelin, if Jimmy Page would rather tour with the Black Crows than right. his original mates, that's a problem. Do you know what I mean? But it wasn't Jimmy Page who said no. It was um, it was Robert Plant. Who I said just no. said Robert Plant. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And Jimmy Page said, "Well, then I'll go out with these guys because they get it. I like right. Steve Gorman. He sounds like Bonzo. Let's get after yeah. him." Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Sting, a Black Crow story that involves Sting. Oh, They're really? Play- Come on, tell me. Black Crows always wind up like the oh, like the noon band on either Monsters of Rock or something they don't belong in because they're just right. a jam band at this point. They're they're deadish, you know, and they jam and they do their theater tours. But they're on a noon. They're like the first band up on an enormous concert, and the police are on it as well. And Sting's walking across the parking lot uh, with Trudy Styler, his wife, yep. about liter- literally ten feet behind them, assistant per person. And then 10 feet behind the two assistants, a mob of people that are actually with them. This whole organism working together in the wake of Sting and Trudy. And it's just, it's absurd. Yeah. And the Black Crows, Steve Gorman actually told me this story, are like sitting in lawn furniture outside the trailer drinking beers. Like they're in their socks. They're just, they're yeah. just dirty <laughs> white boys from yeah. Georgia. They don't, and they're all over 6'4". Like they're big dudes. All of them are tall yeah. and menacing looking, you know? And they walk, and then about five minutes later, Sting goes in the other direction, and the whole organism <laughs> moving goes back, and it's a super awkward thing, and you can tell Sting doesn't want to let his guard down, like, I walked all the way across the lot for no reason, and Chris Robinson goes, what's the matter, man, craft service is closed? <laughs> I could open crafts, and they're all literally laughing at Sting, like, ah, the band just cracks up, like, they're pointing at Sting and laughing That's in his so face, and, that, and everybody just kind of, then yeah. the, pr- the procession went on a little quicker. <laughs> Well, my thing, you know, it's like the the Live Aid, and then there was Live Eight, which was the you know the one in the twenty years later. And there's Live Aids, which you don't want anything to do with. I don't want to get that. No, you don't want to be near that that one. You have that one again, again. Yeah, I got rid of it. So Live Aid, Live Aid. uh, So so Dave Gilmore puts it aside with Roger Waters, Mm -hmm. and they reform Pink Floyd for the charity thing. 
And, uh, you know, that's huge. Yeah. You know, that was huge. Sting was offered, apparently, you know, reform the police to do the gig. For a gazillion dollars. He didn't do it. Yeah. No, 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 no. For the charity thing. Oh, right. He wouldn't do it. He says, I'll play it. And I'll play it. I'll play st- uh, police songs, but I won't get the band back together. Now, there's a big difference between Sting with his session ha- hired hands yeah. doing this, or the wow factor. Ladies and of- gentlemen, the police. Uh, huge, yeah. but he wouldn't do it. So, what made the um, the police get back together again? The Trudy needs a new house tour. Yeah, that apparently was what certain people I know. I've heard it. Trudy needs new house tour. I've heard. Oh, you've heard that one. Yeah, I've heard. Um, uh, John Entwistle is broke again tour for The Who. I heard <laughs> he's he, dead though, isn't he? When he was alive. <laughs> I heard he, hem- now he's really broke. I heard he hemorrhaged, just could not possibly keep a dollar oh, in his but, pocket. Oh, isn't it great? Uh, Rock and roll deaths of cocaine and hookers in Vegas. He really, you don't have enough of those anymore. You know what? Died before he got old. Oh, the irony if Robert, Roger Daltrey knew he was singing about his own guys. Yeah. They both died before they got old. It's sad really, isn't it? It's real sad, Pete wrote but he's a fucking, you know, it, it's, that's nature of the beast. You, it do, is. you do a pile of coke, it's fine. eventually your heart's going to explode. Yeah. It's Uh-oh. funny, I always think of James Dean and Marlon Brando. They were both, like, really good-looking young men. David Gilmore was gorgeous. Yeah, James Dean died, and we all think of him as being a skinny, young, cute boy in the white T-shirt. Marlon Brando, he's dead as well. Big, fat bastard. Yeah, David Gilmore, big, <laughs> you know? big short, fat bastard. Yeah, yeah. David Gilmore, young, was like teen idol, gorgeous man. Yeah, he's still a handsome and fella. He's a big, he looks like he's in Foreigner, he's so fat. That was the other Mick Jones, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, how unfortunate that you've got like the coolest and the uncoolest band, both with the same guy in. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Now, when a band argues over time, like the police, the drummer and the bassist are always arguing over how fast a song should oh, be played. Oh, well, so I recorded Stuart who's, Copeland one. Who's to blame? Stuart Copeland is fantastic. He does his, – his beat is always ahead of the beat. You know, he's, you listen to those early police recordings, and they're spectacular. Yeah. You know, they really are, but they're it's not like time. A, it's almost like a Moroccan weird yeah. – You couldn't put a click track to it. You know, now everyone does records on the grid and, and you can, because you can see music, there is really only one in time. But before you could see music, um, there was like an internal drum, drum rhythm that, that, that Keith Moon had. He was so far ahead of the beat and, and uh, Stuart Copeland is really ahead of the beat. But then you get other drummers like um, Marotta, what's his name? Uh, Rick Marotta, who used to play on 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover and stuff like that. Okay. Oh, I don't know whether he did that drumming. But there's other drum, drummers, you know, who, dun, ta, who are like behind the beat. They're all in time. But nowadays... Al Green's drummer seems right, to be right, right, very right. behind the beat. Yeah. Very, just a snare. It's cack, a, cack, cack, oh, cack, it's so cack, sexy. Cack. Just, Can't believe that. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's just holding back. Now, you see, all these historically have been in time. But nowadays, when you look at everything on the grid, you, can, you would see it as being not in time. It would look like an EKG. Yeah, yeah. It would, well, it would be, that's where it, the beat is supposed to be. And that's where he hits it every time. It's but I hear that with uh, Larry Mullen a lot. On, on songs like on Octong Baby, I hear him sort of get off the reservation a bit. But then if I, yeah. if I do it with my hands, because I'll sing to the baby... I'll sing, I'll sing like, uh, you know, uh, you two songs to the baby. And well, I'll wait, do tell, tell me which one you will sing to the baby. I love Cruel. Cruel's a great lullaby, even right. though it's about the decimation of a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only hanging on to watch you go down is a nice thing to sing to the baby. <laughs> but dun, 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 dun. And then it, yeah. it, it seems to go off a little. And there's also, there's drum intros on Octung Baby that seem to me to be completely out of time. Like, way the fuck out of time. Right. Uh, but obviously I'm wrong because it all... It, it's almost like the offbeats are starting and then he stops and he keeps it counting in his head and then he comes back in on the onbeats. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I, I would have to analyze and get back to you on that one. So, yes. Uncut Dub. Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> yeah, that's very good, actually. That long, melodic break in the middle. Yes. That's what they had when they came to yeah, the studio. I think so. It seems to me... Um, there was one, I, I mean, actually, yes, I think that's pretty much, but there was, for some reason, Shadows and Tall Trees, and this is the only time I've ever done this, I actually 
I can't remember. It must have been me because I can't imagine the band. There was one bit where it modulates. And I hardly ever do modulations. You know, that thing of, yeah. and, uh, you know, that thing in a song. Like, Auto-tune. No, modulation is where it, it goes up a step. It's, oh. it's, it's, a, it's a fake. Sure. It's a fake way of, um, of getting emotion. Okay. In a way. It's, a, it's, a, it's an easy shot. Okay. Uh, and it's, I try not to do it. But I actually modulated Shadows and Tall Trees by speeding up the tape. God, I was weird in those days. A bit weird. And they just trust you? Yeah, they did trust me. I when mean, they, they always it, trust me. Do you tell them they're doing it? Or when they hear it back, do they go, this guy's a genius. He sped it up. I don't know. I don't... There was not so much it? analysis in those days. Nowadays, there's a lot of analysis. Because everybody smokes days, a lot of pot. Now... No, I think it's because you can... Don't easy laugh, Steve. Don't, don't even legitimize it with a response. <laughs> Who's going to... I'm a right, little obsessed with you hating... Right. Oh, no, I don't hate it. I no, just you... twitch when I hear it. Well, that's not... Well, because, you know, it, the story goes that that, that song, they, they were playing some rough mixes to Jimmy Iovine, and they're chatting away, and, um, and who's going to ride... And they're talking about house music as the... Uh, as the as the songs are being played and story goes, Jimmy Iovine, they talk about house music. Who's going to ride your wild horses comes in and he goes, I'll tell you about house music. That fucking song is house music. You'll buy a new fucking house with that song. So the story goes. So the band went, Oh my God, he thinks that that song is the hit meaning when he says house music, you'll buy a new house. Yeah. From that song. So, you know, we, we, we kept... Now you have to go forward. Cause well, we had to make this song. And Jimmy also Iovine. thinking about it, it was the only rock song on that album. And as great as the album was, for America, what do you go to radio with? What is your radio song for, for, the, for the, you know, for rock radio? Because the first thing, I mean, The Fly was the first single, I think, off that love album. Love it. I love The Fly. And live, it gets long. It, it does. In a beautiful way. In the middle, the edge, you go, oh, there's a blues man in there. There is a blues. He's not yeah. a computer. Like, yep. they really jam in the middle. And it's, yeah. it's weird. There seems to be this... This odd, like, long-lost lover thing between The Edge and uh, Adam, when they do jam on Cut Dub and in The Fly, yeah, specifically yeah. those two songs, yeah. they seem to wind to gravitate, and they stay... <laughs> they, you don't realize it, but night after night, they wind up standing almost touching each other. Yeah. And at the end, they'll just kind of shake each other's fingers like, we did That's it again, right. mate. yes, yeah. I mean, jamming is something that you two really... I'm worried about. I mean, certainly in um, when they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it was very worrying for them that the tradition of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is that everyone gets on the stage at the end and jams. And they, they don't like that. You know, that's still the punk rock ethic. Were you su- they don't really know how to jam. Were you surprised at the Edge's appearance on This Might Get Loud? He seemed a little out of place. I haven't seen it yet. Although I'm, I, I was mentioned in it, apparently. Yeah, you were a lot. Um, if I say Jimmy Page... Uh, who sh- won that, though? Because everyone... I, oh, it's, Jimmy, it's not even fucking close. Jimmy Page won it, right? Yeah, there's no... They, Jimmy Page starts to play Whole Lot of Love. This and the, the Edge the, the and heard, Jack yeah. White just look up and smile like Daddy came home with presents. Right. Like, they're gone. They're children. Yeah. And, you just, and Jimmy Page is smiling like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, you know who I am. I'm Jimmy Page. And he teaches them, like, in the outcuts, he's teaching them how to play the fucking theremin. It gets off the reservoir. It gets crazy. Oh, great. Yeah. And uh, Jack White is, doesn't really have the hits, and he's, it's, it's, it's a truncated version of rock and roll. So I think Edge you, comes second. Jack I think White Edge comes, comes a very distant third. Edge comes third? I would say after so. After Jack White. And I love you, too. Yeah. Jack White, uh, there's a lot of dirt under the nails. Yeah, but there is not with the edge and the no, edge. No, no, no. Edge is middle class. The edge doing a lot of pedals and a lot yeah. of and when he's oh, teaching but, them, this is how I played. I'm not sure what the song was. Elevation. Well, that I like because that's yeah. just you know the joke is he's not playing at all. He's moving a pedal on his right, foot. Right, right. That's wow, the I saw that in wow, the. Yeah, and yeah, he's not yeah. he's not even touching the guitar. <laughs> And he yeah. goes, and he actually makes fun of himself. He goes, it's hard to come to the band and go, I got our new hit. And without touching the guitar, he goes, me. Uh, but Jack White plays a Sunhouse record uh, before he gets to the studio. He's on his ranch or whatever. Right. And he goes, this is the song that got me into rock and roll. And it's Sunhouse. And he goes, he just gives this beautiful summation. It didn't matter that he's clapping. There's no music. Yeah. It's just Sunhouse. Who's grinning? And he's clapping his hands off rhythm. He's not in tune. Right. But that song, that's the song that got... And as you're, you're listening to Sunhouse and you're going, 
holy shit like this is a big deal so right. so jack white kind of takes that in with him and you know that's where and he's right. on a farm yeah. and he makes a guitar out of scratch using like old beer bottles and yeah. strings from his fucking house and you go all right mm. and there's a lot of dirt under the nails yeah and where the edge when he play when he's kind of quote walking jimmy and uh jack through a song off of boy it's a little like that's mm, okay. kind of it's very basic now, rudimentary a little ludite Luddite. Boom! Boom, there you go. Well, uh, growing up in Dublin in the late 70s, which you two did, mid-70s, it was very, you know, people forget that there was no, it, it, it was in a, such an isolated place. Even though it was the capital of Ireland, it was like a village. And there was one record store that got records in weeks and weeks and weeks after they were released in the UK or in America. And there was no radio that you could really listen to anything. So it was, you know, to, to get a copy of Marky Moon by television, which was a big influence, or Iggy Pop. These were the, but they had like two or three records. So you two, you see, I, I didn't ever experience any musical form. They grew up in public. You know, they didn't really know anything about music. I mean, they, the blues, when they decided to do the blues, I, I didn't think it was a great part of their history. Like, Rattle and Hum doesn't really work for me. Yeah, Angel and Harlem. You know, nah. People like it, but, but it's they never, like, You know, up until that point, they didn't when know When love how... comes to town. Yeah. Nice Chevy commercial. <laughs> they didn't know how to do a 12-bar blues. You know, they didn't know... You know, 12-bar blues. It's well, neither, like, I mean, but does Townsend? But Townsend makes it his own thing. Townsend ends the edge, I think, that says Townsend plays flamenco. It's really just catch and release, catch and release. Oh, right, right, right. Like, dun, 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 big flourish. <laughs> you know what I mean? He takes yeah, yeah, out the, and right. he always takes out the third. Yeah, yeah. So they, that's a sound that's strictly British. I know you're talking about Ireland, yeah. but the Who is a sound that's completely British. Yes. With not yeah. a lot of R&B, whereas the Stones, complete R&B. Oh, well, they, they, they just basically and took, even the took what America, you know. But, but, you know, you read any, like, Keith's book, yeah. the, the first part, I didn't finish it, but at the beginning where him and Mick used to just, you know, they would see each other with, with bags of records, yeah. and that's how they got to know each other. Um, they were real, you know, Keith and Mick were real... Uh, they loved the blues. Lo loved music yeah. and listened to it. Johnny Mars the same way. Um, now, I wish I'd had a camera the night I introduced Keith Richards to Johnny Marr. And they were jamming around my house. Was it as cool as when I introduced Buddy Hackett to Redman from Wu-Tang Clan? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Redman! Uh, Maybe not as cool as when Jimmy Cliff said to me, really stoned, your name's Lily White? That was pretty cool. That's really <laughs> that, was, <laughs> <laughs> that was a million-dollar backing group. That was during... Harlem Shuffle. That was on the Stones. There was Jimmy Cliff. Wow. There was Bob Don Covey. There was Bobby Womack. There was the future. All these people could headline a theater tour. Yeah, yeah. The, the future uh, Bruce Springsteen, Patty. Um, the woman that ruined the tour, the last tour for me. Well, maybe. I took a piss because she had to play two songs, and I missed Backstreets because the line was so long. <laughs> I was peeing when Backstreet started, and I said, "If I ever meet that lady, I'm telling her, lay it off." An acoustic guitar not plugged in. That'll really pull the E Street Band sound together. That's what we've been lacking uh, all through these albums. You seem like, as I go through your uh, page here, of all these things you've done, from, you know, Big Country, Chris Cornell, uh, Susie and the Banshee, Switch for Talking Heads, Killers, uh, Pogue, Psychedelic Vert, Rolling Stones, Smiths, Morrissey, U2, Ecstasy, World Party. It's, these are so diverse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they it, are. It, it seems but they're like all white, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, and not the stone so much. Keith, yeah, I, I think Keith true. would take offense to that. Yeah, it seems like the diversity of this list. You really, you must have to get out of your way. You really do. These are very like Morrissey's Morrissey. I love. There's that. no fuck. Yeah, yeah, there's no fucking around. One thing I always thought was that when I had success with one artist, instead of doing something similar. To, to have a longevity of career, I would use the success to work on something that wasn't sounding the same. Right. So for every time I was, uh, you know, I had success with U2, I would get bands like Flock of Seagulls and The Alarm wanting me to produce them, and I would go, no, thank you. I do U2. That's the band I do in that 
sort of vein. Yeah. I mean, there's been times, you know, Simple Minds, U2, Big Country in the early 80s. But then in the 90s, Dave Matthews Band, Fish, Counting Crows, very different. You know, for a punk rocker to do like a 20-minute songs with Dave Matthews Band was was very different. But but I, 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 you see, I don't think of genre at all. For me, I just have two two boxes one that's good and one that's not good but how do you how do you know you're going to be able to do your job you you have that's to my know. big uh like if wu-tang clan asked you to produce the record no, i mean i i, I there's but a, not because it's bad because it's now you are going by genre you can't produce hip-hop it's not your wheel no i can't the reason for that being is that in in hip-hop i'm not confident in that top difference the top two percent the top one percent that that differentiates good and great you see i can i I know what i'm confident about in differentiating differentiating those those tiny little percentages that that make the difference right really and um and you know i know yeah uh, and in hip-hop i'm not confident about that so that's why i'm not you know uh, incredibly wealthy. I can't be a uh, a jobbing producer. I can't just do it. I, I can't make an okay record. Well, you do all right some, for yourself. I can make Lally some White. great records, but that, that that's why making the, the you know the decision to do it in the first place is very important for me. And I'm really excited about Juanes because it's something completely different for me. You know what? That is true. That is completely different. Yeah. Who's who, the Pogues? Seem like. Who do, I don't know many people that don't. Yeah. Most difficult. You're Irish, aren't you? Irish, Scottish, yeah. Ferguson. Scottish, that's right. And German. Yeah, more in Ferguson. Yeah. Uh, what And Collie. What are your... Who's difficult? Like, what makes... What is the biggest... Lead singer syndrome, obviously, comes into play. Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, but it seems like in a band like The Stones, you got a guy like Keith to go fucking knock it off. We're going to get this shit done. Yeah, but Keith and Mick were not talking to each other during the album I did. I mean, a, maybe one hour. Could, they that, were in, that could slow things down. It was really, yeah. And um, But the song... I, went, my job with that was Henry Kissinger as much as anything. Yeah. I'd have Keith coming up to me saying, tell him this. And I'd have Mick coming up saying, well, you go and tell him that. You tell that motherfucker. It's getting better. It's well, getting that's because I do Keith for the first time. <laughs> it. It's a struggle. <laughs> uh, it, but the song off of Dirty Work, One Hit to the Body. I love that great song. Great song. Not good. Yeah. Great. Great song. Yeah. And I would say you could put that song. Do you know who played the guitar solo in that song? Uh, a little bit of I trivia don't. for uh, Jimmy Page. Really? Yes. Wow. Jimmy Page was at the studio. Why didn't Keith or uh, Ronnie play it? Because uh, Keith, Keith doesn't really do solos. And, Is it and, true when Mick Taylor did Sway and other songs off of Sticky Fingers and he did the rhythm and they brought Keith in to do lead or vice versa? Right. Uh, Keith would listen to it and take the headsets off because he wasn't sure what the fuck was going on. I don't know. You don't know? No, I don't know. Mick Taylor, I was... Mick def- Taylor was... The best musician The best ever musician ever to be in the Stones. Yeah. And I, that's acknowledged. The greatest thing about Keith's book to me yeah. is the simplicity with why... If you buy a guitar, if Matty Boy here gets a guitar, a guitar center, takes it off the wall, and even though he knows how to play Start Me Up, it doesn't sound like Start Me Up. Yeah. No Stone song, you just can't take it off the wall and play. It's because he takes the last string off all of his guitar well, he does the five string tuning yeah, yeah he's got five strings <laughs> and which like are only sim- two different notes yeah, yeah it's like the simplest thing yeah. in the world that's it, been oh, this yeah. big secret since his book maybe people in music yeah. know it but here's every a story guy, about yeah. start me up apparently okay what album was that on uh tattoo, tattoo you yeah. okay tattoo you was an album where it was they supposed to be a it was an outtake from another one i believe yeah well tattoo you was a was a was a whole album of they didn't get together to record it they just went through all the outtakes from all the other albums. And apparently, though, Tattoo, um, Start Me Up had turned, by take 50, it had turned into a reggae tune, and they discarded it for the album it was supposed to be for. What they did, they went back to the tapes. They listened back to right at the beginning. Take two was the one that they ended up using. But they, 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 you know, someone, it was such a crazy session that no one has said, that's the one, move on to another song. Right. Well, how do you say that to the Rolling Stones? How do you say it? I, it was really difficult. I, I, I thought, how could anyone, how could a great producer not have noticed Start Me Up 
and like marked it that that's the one. And then even after you do it, you know, you know, you let the band keep doing it 50 times and then say, but go back and listen to take two. Someone had forgotten. Everyone had forgotten. Right. But then once you're in that, OK, the, the Stones album I did and I, I arrived there and they'd already been recording for three months. And everyone had uh, it was in Paris. Everyone had these lock knives, you know, uh, not flick knives, but but ones that you know, like that. And, you, that. And, I, and I walked in and people were just like in general going like this and it was this is so weird two weeks later i'm going i'm i think i'm gonna get myself a knife so i got myself one. <laughs> it just and all of a sudden you're, I was, now you're on the pirate ship yeah I, now i'm on the pirate ship i was brought into the pirate ship by by mick i s- realized very quickly that it was much more fun to hang out with keith was that a keith strike, and ronnie was that a strike against you in the beginning did you have to earn keith, keith oh absolutely yes yeah yeah you you're a marked man mick well, that, you yeah I, because i was brought in by mick so you can't be any good. Mick doesn't play an instrument. Although Keith, I was a, a, a few of us. I know he plays guitar. I mean, you know, Mick, for, yeah. for the, but, I, but was, I hate when lead singers put guitars on. It to me, it ruins the whole show. And that goes for Bono. That goes for Perry Farrell. That goes for Mick Jagger. Yeah, certainly for Perry. But and, uh, any lead oh, singer on, that puts on a guitar, you know, because you know when Bono puts that guitar on, he's going to sing one. That's pretty fucking. When good. Bono puts the guitar on, I know I'm going to take a piss. <laughs> so you've never heard one, then? I have heard one. Come on, uh, that lovely green Gretsch that he plays. Oh, it's pretty sweet. The way you say it, now I just want to go back in time and hang out there. Really, just that beautiful green Gretsch. So how do you tell the Rolling Stones, Steve Lily White, Silly White on silly Twitter, white, at, at Silly White, at S-I-L-L-Y-W-H-I-T-E. Silly white. W-H-I-T-E. I'm at jmore 37 at The Real Hey Maddie. Uh, how do you tell the Rolling Stones, you know, that's not working, guys? Um, okay, I'll tell you a story. Um, I like stories, Dad. I like stories. So Bill Wyman's the bass player, and and the the that the, the, we did a track, a take, and come in and listen to it. And at the beginning, I would say to Bill, Bill, can we recut the bass because it's out of time? Now Bill Wyman would look at me and go, "We're the fucking Rolling Stones. We had a song called Out of Time. Don't you tell me that that's out of time." And I suddenly realised it's all about face. You need to find out the best way to deal with them. So I suddenly realized next time he comes in and we're listening and the bass is all out of time. I say, Bill. But the bass was out of time. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I say, Bill, you know what? Can we do the bass again? Because I, I think I can get a better sound. And he goes, sure, I'll do it for you. I'll do it. Now, he knew what I knew, but it was just a matter of, you know, don't say that to me. So there's, there's ways. I, I'm very good at my job because I think my personality That's is conducive to my job. I'm very empathetic to, um, to, to the needs of musicians. And, and, so you and, don't tell the Rolling Stones that doesn't work? You, you find to... ways of getting them to do it again. What if they tell you this is it? This is the single. We got it. We're good. This is the well, best Well, we knew song. Harlem Shuffle was, was the single. That was a cover version. It's a terrible version. song, yeah. It's a cover version. It's terrible. But... Mm, you move. It's terrible. If you don't like Shake Wild Horses, tail, how the man. fuck can you like Harlem Shuffle? <laughs> well, <laughs> you yeah. fucking no, psychopath. <laughs> if you don't like Wild Horses, how could you possibly like the no, cover? No, because you can dance to the Harlem Shuffle. It has a good groove. I can dance you to the fucking. Get some sleep I can, tonight. I can dance to the Macarena. You can. That doesn't mean I, you know. And that doesn't I've mean I want videos. to. <laughs> <laughs> so how you've you've dodged this question brilliantly, I might add. Maybe well, the, I'm, maybe I'm un, I'm discerning your most discernible skill. Of uh, right, I'm, I'm asking you how do you tell the Rolling Stones no, and you haven't answered it in ten minutes. So I, I'm learning. Well, I just gave uh, you an example. You told no. I, that's Bill Wyman. That's a big difference. But, Bill but, Wyman who's about to but retire. But you do lots of those little things. How do you say it to Keith? No, he didn't know that. To Keith, you. Um, I'm trying to think of an ex- an example. Or does where it ever I'd... happen? Is Keith on the money all the time? No. no, no one's on the money all the time. That's impossible. You know, we're only human. Everyone's only human. Um, but but you, you Neil Pert on the money every time. Oh God, Rush hate me. They hate me. I just took a name out of a hat. They hate me because Why? I I I said I'd produce them, then I didn't. The only time I've ever almost been threatened with having my legs broken in the music business by Canadians by by the manager. He didn't. He implied like, but Steve, you said you'd do the album, and I said, look, you don't understand. Still- you don't want someone to do your record. You don't want to shag someone if they don't want to shag you. Right. 
It's well, like, no, I think that you're wrong on that one. Really? I think a lot of you chase what you can't have, right? She was gagging for it. I love that word. That's an English expression. Gagging for gagging it? Gagging for it. She was gagging. <laughs> Somebody's going to use that for the rest of his life, Maddie boy. <laughs> At the real hey, Maddie. Uh, I have a different interpretation of that, though. Gagging. For his it. involves Ronnie Mascara. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> when you, uh, what was I just going to ask you? Oh, I heard, I heard. Uh, Ronnie Wood, when he went to rehab for booze, <laughs> right. was really just to because re- people don't realize the Rolling Stones, aside from Mick, Keith, and Charlie, everybody's on salary, including Ronnie Wood to this day. Well, he's the new boy. Yeah, I know, he's on I, salary. I, Ronnie Wood's the new boy still. Yeah, they always so, call him. That. He, he was a new boy in 1975. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So he was he's ten on, years when I was with. He him. makes a salary. Yeah, he's an employee. And you get to check, just like how you and I would get a check from a company. Yeah. He's not a royalty guy. That's why it says, no. in the credits, it'll say, hey, Negrita, inspired by, it never says written by Ronnie Wood. I think there's no. two songs in the entire catalog where they give him a shot. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bill Wyman has way more writing credits. Eesh. Right. Uh, so I heard when he went to rehab, it was really just to renegotiate his contract, because you can't go on tour without Ronnie if you don't have Bill, uh-huh. which would have been fucking brilliant. Right. That's... He goes to rehab like, hey, man, I got a problem. I'm doing 90 days. And they're like, well, we're going on tour in two months. He goes, yeah, I guess you're going to have to go out with Jeff Beck or somebody. And they had to go. And I don't know if you remember, he was in rehab for about six days. They came right, from very yeah, quick. Well, he's been in rehab more than once. Right. But I heard this that one particular time. <laughs> you didn't hear that? No, I hadn't heard that. But right. I do remember him coming out of rehab once. And, and I was in Dublin. And he was in Dublin. And, and uh, he was drinking non-alcoholic beer. Just, he'd just come out of rehab. Yeah, that's not a good sign. And we were at a, well, they always say non-alcoholic beer is for non-alcoholics. Yeah. I always remember that when I was going, yeah. And then... I remember I had one and the smell of it made me feel horrible. very funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't it made me. It made me close. It made me feel great. It made me, <laughs> it made me get a little... Very, it, it, I'll put it very succinctly. It crushed me with anxiety. Really? Having a beer to my mouth yeah. that was not alcoholic, but the smell and the liquid and everything made me go, ha, huh, ha, huh, as if did I had actually, a... Yeah, did you actually drink it? Yeah. You did? I had some, and then it, it was a bad news, and I called my mom, who's been sober, like, shit, 40 years? Wow. No, 30 years, excuse Fantastic. me. Yeah, and uh, she said, bad, 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 bad idea. It'll, it's just, yeah. not because you'll it's get a... high off it, like, no. you'll get high off NyQuil before you'll get high off, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the, just the procedure of it all... It's just a horrible idea. Is that why? I, I never want to white just knuckle. Get, just get yourself white a club knuckling, soda. I just, mean, get a, just get a Diet Coke. Have a nice time. Yeah. No, water. 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 You want a fucking water. Water is where it's at. And the, coffee. Oh, fuck. I love God. coffee. No, I want it. I love Do you like coffee? Oh, I'm crazy. I, I love coffee. I pee out of my ass because I love coffee so much. Ah. I, I meant I means. drink so much coffee, I don't have solid bowel movements. Right. I didn't mean as a means of celebrating coffee. <laughs> I decided to pee. I let men pee yeah, in my ass. Yeah, let's pee out of our ass. I let, men, I let men pee in my ass. I hold it. And then when I see coffee that I really like, I drop trowel yeah. and I spray pee out of my butt. Uh, Smiths. Smiths, I only, uh, very briefly, I just mixed one song called. But uh, they liked you enough that Morrissey. Oh, took yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love Morrissey. He's, he's, Why he is really it? is one of the stranger men in music. Uh, is he straight or gay? Oh, or to be determined? No, I mean he's very shy, but um, but he he it took a long time. But I think he's gay. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I really no cause no I no couldn't no, tell. no no. I mean he was celibate for a hell of a long time. Uh, a stunningly beautiful man, really? gorgeous man. Oh yeah, Morrissey. Even now, like in his old age, he's got with an his... overbite. All right, well let him Underbite. down easy. When you're not fucking him, let him down easy. <laughs> Say look, I love him to death, and he's so sweet. I love him to death as well, but it seems like one of the great, and the Smiths are one of the great bands. I agree. I, 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 they're in. You see, I wouldn't put the Stones in my top five, but the I bands. Would, yeah, I would put the Smiths in my top five only because time is a great. Oh, you can only, and I wouldn't put you two in my top five bands, but time is a great. Uh, Who's in your top five? Begs Beatles the question. first. Beatles. Queen Smiths. You don't think Queen gets uh, Beach Boys? Oh, fuck off. No, you're an American. You don't like, you don't understand. I live in Malibu. I don't like the fucking beat no, noise. I, Pet Sounds is a glop of shit. Pet Sounds gets so, oh, Lily White's getting Lily really? Red. Really? Pet Sounds is the most overhyped pile of fucking dog shit I I've ever heard I think it's better than life. Sergeant Peppers. It's not. No, I'm, I think it Conceptually is. Conceptually, first of all. There's no concept. Trying. There's no concept in Sergeant Peppers. 
you think at the beginning, and let me introduce to you the one and only Billy Shears. You think this is going to be a great concept album, and then it goes into something that is, you know, Pet Sounds at least has a has something that is a thread going through it. Yeah, garbage. The thread of <laughs> shit. Thread of shit. At least I put my name on it. At least I'm not going to lie to you. Go sure, yeah. Oh, come I think on, they're. Up. Oh, I think for the time, on. you know what? I think that is a visceral response to you growing up in dreary London. Like no, because thought, I hated the Eagles. Now I like the Eagles. I fucking hate but, the but Eagles. But the whole, whole Hotel California, I just despised in those well, days. Well, because it's bad. Well, no. It's He's rich white solos. guys yeah. singing for rich white people, drinking yeah. red, white wine out of red Solo cups. <laughs> That's true. Joe Walsh, on the other hand, you want to give me James Gang, right? Okay. I'm in. All right. Funk I, I'm beginning let's to understand your, your, your... I know what you do. And that's got some dirt on the nails. That's got, a little, yeah, that's got some Mickey Thump in there. You say that. Dirt on the nails. And that's a trio. I'm a sucker for the trio. The greatest ever trio? Loudest ever. Who is the greatest ever trio, would you think? Uh, you're probably going to come at me with some shit I never no, thought I don't. of before. Cream, arguably. I'm just saying. Cream. Cream could be the greatest ever trio. Well, not Rush, obviously. Oh, no. They'll kill me. They'll kill no, me. not Rush. I, 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 I don't think Rush. No, I don't think so. Uh, but I didn't... I did not Jimi know. Hendrix. And that was that, a band. It's a trio, but it's Jimi Hendrix. No, 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 no. It's a band. That bass player and drummer. Buddy was... Miles and... Um... No, 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 no. Noel Redding yeah. and... Um... Well, he had a trio each time. The Jimi Hendrix... The original Jimi Hendrix experience. Yeah, but live with the Phil Maurice, that's the new crew with Buddy Miles. That was a trio too, wasn't it? Okay, yes. Yes. But the early... You know, the, one, the, the, the great recordings. The experience was certainly a trio, and you have to put them, you know... Electric Lady Ant Land and Voodoo Child, you, when you realize that's a trio. I yeah. think what's alarming, and I am going to answer your question, and I want to finish your top five. Uh, nobody gives a shit about my top five. I certainly don't when you're sitting in my house. But what's your number one? Ever? Yeah. Beatles. Yeah. It's not even fucking. Have to be. It's, it's not close, is it? And there's the Beatles goes, and there's everyone are else. Are you a Stones guy or a Beatles guy? I'm like, well, I don't know, but you're apparently an idiot to think that those two are the two. No, dis- one's it, a pub rock band. It should be. One's a cover band. Stone Zeppelin and uh, someone else is here. And the Beatles. Yeah. It's just, it's an. See, I, don't, I, wouldn't, the Beatles, I wouldn't put the Stones and Zeppelin anywhere near people realize there. or appreciate is the I Beatles being. Pink Floyd the, way ahead the of The Beatles being bands. first. Yes. The fact that the Beatles were fucking first, and they didn't do Queen Bee. They didn't do Willie Dixon songs. No. They got off. Well, they did at the beginning. They were doing Skiffle yes, Band stuff. but then they, they... But then they fucking oh. did Polythene Pan... They only had, you know, 40 Penny seconds Lane, of a song. Fields. But even going back to Abbey Road, what, yeah. they weren't together when they recorded it. No. But they go, we only have 40 seconds, Polythene Pam. And they go, well, let's fucking record. Let's not... They didn't even try... To make it into something other than what it was, yeah. it was a sum of a part. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, of course, you're a fucking producer, and I'm like, yeah. do you understand what I'm saying about putting this song together? <laughs> <laughs> so let's just let's just put them all together as yeah. a side too. Yeah. Uh, okay. What surprises me the most about I'm going to put James Gang in my top five trios. Okay. But what surprises me most about trios, and what surprises most people, people don't realize back in the day when you went and saw a concert. And I heard this from the great Ron Bennington. Uh, you didn't know what the band looked like. That the whole experience was you didn't even know how many guys were in it. You read the liner notes. You gathered all the information you could from the album itself. Yeah. And when people saw the James Gang, my friend Marty Greenfield lives in upstate New York. Big shout out to Marty. Told me this. They were looking around for the rest of the band because it was right. so fucking loud and sonic. Right. And there's only three the hippies guys. on stage, yeah. just yeah. skinny dudes. Uh, so that's what always amazed me about a trio is how fucking loud they can play yeah. when done well. Nirvana is so loud and sonic and so... Actually, yeah. Nirvana, I would... Yes. So simple. Yeah. Out of the ground, well, the into the is. sky. And, and that one lyric sums up the entire experience. Out of the ground, into the sky, out of the sky, into the dirt. That's the lyrics of the song. Yeah. And that's how... Into the dirt, dirt, dirt. That's yeah. how it ends. Yeah. So I'm going to say Nirvana, best trio of all time. No, I would agree with you. Nirvana. I love Nirvana. I, think. I thought you were going to smash me over the head with that. No, 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 no. I'd forgotten about that. I never <laughs> think fucking... of them as a, as a trio. Have you but... ever heard of Bloody Gypsy? Open for Noel Redding. You know, I thought you were going to come out with some, some fucking crazy <laughs> British shit that I don't know. No, no, I'd say uh, Nirvana. Nirvana. I think the police are astounding. The police were great. Yeah. The police made it okay to play quietly. Oh. Walking on the moon. Oh, it took me a yeah. hundred listens to realize it was a love song. I was so caught up in walking on the moon yep. and just being high while yeah, I listened to it. It's just such a pity Sting is such a twit. Biggest but, dick in rock and roll? I, I, uh, no. I saw, I saw Ben Harper's dick. 
the other day. No, is it's he, huge. Is he the biggest ben dick? Ben Harper has an enormous penis. <laughs> I was standing next to him in the toilet. I had to go and back and over. tell everyone. I've and just you looked seen... over? Or, Duh. Or no, no, you but you know those butt. people. You know those people with big penises always show them. It's like, you know, us, us people with small penises, we're all like shy. Yeah, we know. You know, we, we, we hold it like this. Whereas the people... I hold it with two fingers and I'm smoking it. <laughs> No, is Sting the biggest dick? Is he on the short list? I would, I could never, not possibly mention anything more, as I'm going to be sued. All right, he's a fair enough. Man. Who are your favorite trios? Give me three. Since it's three. Trios, I, you know what? The Police, Nirvana. You, you absolutely have good taste. Police, Nirvana. Cream. I love Cream. Cream's um, insane. But in terms of great guitarists, you see, I always. Well, but trios are those your three? Trio, yeah, I think so. Cream, Nirvana, and the Police. Mm. That's pretty good. I'm, f- I'm jacked up about that. Me and Steve Lillywhite meeting on that. Man. Your five greatest bands of all time. I, Queen, I, Beatles. Yeah, Beatles first. Second place is either the Smiths or Queen. I'll always... Wow. I go, no, I know it's Whoa. controversial. I don't think it's controversial. It, it's your opinion. But, but, you know, what's the definition of... For me, it's, it's timelessness. Because all, I believe in art. But what we all aim for in our art is timeless art. You know, whether it's uh, the Chrysler building or the Concord... The, the, but see, when I see the Smiths, I, I hear a very specific time in my life. It, but, but, but it's pristine. It, it, it's, I mean, Steely Dan is timeless. You know, I hated... No, I always like, actually liked Steely Dan because it was a bit weird. I liked them for a moment until I realized they sucked. No, you're wrong. Really? No, yeah, you're wrong. It, for me. How's that? Because I can't <laughs> no, get to it. They not, suck for me. No, 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 no. Your opinion is I understand... <laughs> I understand how uh, talented... How can you have an opinion? uh, Because I have an asshole. (laughs) Uh, I understand how talented the guys are. Yeah. You know? It's just not my bag, baby. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like the drugginess of them, actually. The Smith seems like they could have used a Steve Lillywhite early because it seems a little overproduced. What I love about the Smiths... It seems a little canned... No, Not no. wait. Let me finish real quick because okay. I need to quantify this because I don't. I don't want you to get the wrong opinion of what of what I'm saying. Yeah. I love the Smiths. Yeah, an incredibly important band, a great band. I just wish somebody opened it up a little bit for them. Yeah, it, it was a little se- bit. It's it, a, yeah. it has a ceiling. The just, sound, I should say. Yeah. Not okay. the band. The sound. Well, the, the, has the, a but ceiling. the sound is the band, and and, and the sound. And is how soon Morris is now is the song with no ceiling on it? It's almost like for that one single, the yeah. lid gets left off. But you know what? How Soon Is Now was an extra track on a 12-inch. Are, it seems like they all are, right? It was an extra track Start on a 12-inch. Start Me Up, How Soon Is Now, the biggest hits. Yeah, yeah. Our um, Afterthoughts. So, yeah. But I, Beatles, I, I, Queen, Smiths, Smiths, Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. Wow. And The Who. Because I'd say The Who are great without a, a, Go on. a, a yes, brilliant yes. lead singer. I say without I think, Roger Daltrey, the Who don't miss a beat, and I've said that yeah. for years. And people tell me I'm crazy. No, no, no. I mean, he he's a good it. singer, but he doesn't bring it better than people without him. People think we're crazy. No, people think that that is the most because he's was one of the greatest frontmen of all time. I'm like, look, if Pete Townsend can sing a third of the song, and I don't even realize the switch off. Yeah, like a quick one while he's away, and Magic Bus. That's Pete. Yeah, a lot of the time. Yeah. No, no. I mean, he, he sings his own songs better than, at least as good as Daltrey. Daltrey doesn't, I mean, he's, and I love that, the, 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 did you see that documentary on The Who, the most recent one, post Entwistle dying, where musicians gave their opinions? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, a fantastic brilliant. documentary. And the yeah. two of them at the end saying, well, we're, we're the, you know, and Townsend will admit that he used to hate Daltrey. Yeah. And, you know, because maybe for what we're saying, because Daltrey didn't um, realize his, didn't take his songs to an extra level. He just faithfully reproduced the songs. I mean, he didn't make them worse. I'm, I'm, I won't say that, but he didn't, you know. It seems like now they're on this weird nostalgic tour where Pete goes, I never realized how much you meant to me. Yeah, well, because it's only the two of them left. Yeah. You know. And, Brutal. Yeah. Who well, you can't say Hendrix for any of this, and you can't say Beatles for any of this. Who's a better guitar player than Townsend? Who's a better mind? But the, is the, there a better mind, mind than musically Townsend. than Townsend? Ooh, um, you probably put Gilmore in there. Yeah, Gilmore, 
but there was a time when you know I would not let guitarists bend a note because right. that was uncool. Punk in back in the late seventies, you know, it's like don't bend your notes because that's like. Is it like, possible that Townsend is underrated? Yes, I think so. Because I think with the kid stuff that he got accused of and stuff, people yeah. like he became a punchline. But I don't think people realize the amount of work that's happening. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like when you and listen- he didn't have a Lennon. Or a McCartney. No, to he, go he with was him. all of them. It was all him. He brought the song in. Yeah, he brought it in. So really great. He brought in a jug of milk and said, I yeah. want everybody to yeah. do this jug of but milk. But I would say the same with Brian Wilson. You see, Brian Wilson was the brains. He didn't... I, and also, the Beatles had George Martin, which was, in, you know... Greatest. You cannot yeah. underestimate he the was, power of a team. Yeah. You see, that for me We've is... Been give, a lot of people have been given the title of fifth Beatle, but yes. George Martin was the actual fifth. And that was like on an A-track. Well, of course, but he was the grown-up. Yeah. But he was a facilitator. He, ele- he was like, if the Beatles said, let's try this, he went, okay, let's try it. But even deciphering like what guys on acid are trying to get across. Yeah. Like Strawberry Fields, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's an orphanage where I grew up. Like, yeah. all, right, all right, all right. How yeah. about you just sing it? I'll bring in a full orchestra. Yeah. And we'll combine the two. Oh, it was incredible. Um, yeah. P- Pete, the amount of work that's happening, I don't think people understand. And uh, quickly to go back to Led Zeppelin, when you listen to when the levee breaks, John Bonham just playing the opening drums, yeah. it, it takes you almost like half your life before you go, oh shit, that's just one guy. That John, that can and you you just don't even realize that's just a guy working. It's like he's putting up a wall. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, uh, and I think that was the no. The reason, yeah, the reason Zeppelin aren't in my top five is purely because the uh, the assassina, uh, asinine lyrics. I mean, I don't get any of uh, Roger. Is that uh, why uh, the Stones uh, aren't in? Because uh, the Stones lyrics. lyrics are yeah, but but but, but not. You it know. seems like lyrically. They got great when they got musically old. Like, I really like Voodoo Lounge. And I think it's an incredibly right. underappreciated album. Uh-huh. And I think uh, musically, they're right there. Yeah. Keith is blistering. or Whoever's doing the solos, because you never know. Right. And, you know, like, I'm out, uh, out of tears and um, two hearts together. Like, rarely right. do you hear a love song about we're in love right now just together. It's either I want you or I just lost you. Yep. Do you yep, know what yep, I mean? Yeah, I got it. And uh, Suck on the Jugular. Like, these are really good Stone songs, but it just yeah. got written, it got put into that pile of they're old. Right. And I think that's too bad. Well, that's the trouble. It, you know, I mean, but one of Bono's, yeah, theories about, you know, you need to, I mean, I've never really been an Aerosmith fan, but at least they look like rock stars. You know, when they walk into a room, you go, well, you know, they look like rock stars. I mean, that. That's another band to me that's all bass in a good way. Songs can, like Sweet Emotion, like it's songs yeah. constructed around bass. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of bands, because I always thought the bass was just this instrument. I right. wrote it off most well, of which my ba- life. Wait, okay. Which band? Probably the police are the, are the band most evolved around the bass. I don't. I would no. I would. I don't think uh, Mr. Copeland would stand for that. So I think he drums his balls off to try to get that out. Right. Okay. That but I. True. But when I listen to the police, certainly. Yeah. But band around the bass most. It's tough. Well, there's an English band you probably aren't that aware of called the Stranglers, who are fucking great. But the money's so good. Walking on the beach. I know, it's the first track. I had that album. I had the album, The Stranglers. The guy was just wearing a white album cover and the guy was in black leather. Yeah, great bass sound. Really grungy bass sound. Um, But then some bands get by with no bassists. They do. Yeah, 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 the doors. Although I I hear a fucking bass every... I hate the doors. Really? Oh, I really like Morrison. Did you like his lyrics? I always thought he was... Cancel my subscription to the resurrection. Mm, yeah. Okay. Send my letters to the house of the... It's pretty just good, the, man. Oh, just the fact that he read books, you know. Big deal. <laughs> 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 what a jerk. <laughs> no, but it was like this Being big dumb thing like that us. he read books. No, oh, he wanted to be a Morrison, poet. No, read. I think... I think uh, let me tell you about Texas Radio and the Big Beat. I, th- I think Jim wrote some real, <laughs> real heavy shit, man. Okay. Uh, what's well, 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 we, 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 we joined together on the on the uh, we're on making the, trios. the double helix. We did well man. on the trip. Yeah, the, but yeah, then but we separate. We're, oh, we're miles away. 
Who, who's your... Oh, the bass band is the Stranglers? I don't know yeah. a bass band. I guess the police. Yeah, I don't know. The police, I think. Uh, okay. Uh, Post-Beatles, Lennon or McCartney? Oh, McCartney. Not even close. I'm in. Not even close. Absolutely. 80% of the catalog. I mean, catalog, I loved catalog. Wings. I, I think Jets. I love Wings. Listen to what the man said. Band on Talking the run. TV show Wings? I love Wings. Silly Love Songs. Yeah, it's incredible. Band on the Run. It, oh, it, even it, Silly Love Songs. Terrible title, but a And we're not great taking song. away from John Lennon. No, 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 we no. We know he's a genius. But we're talking about... But we're talking about a guy that did 80% of the work while another guy was tripping his fucking balls yes. off, hanging out with Yoko Ono, sitting on the floor. Anybody that disagrees with this, yeah. go to YouTube right now yeah. and go uh, Helter Skelter Rehearsal, and you'll see Paul on a righty guitar, even though he's a lefty, yeah. And he's doing the bass with his mouth. Helter Skelter. And he's that same foot tap that he does in black. It's a lefty guitar. I'm full right. of shit. Uh, and then they pan over, and John's on the floor, just fucking smoking a joint with yeah. Yoko. And I'm like, that's, yeah. that's a lot of no, work. No, absolutely, Paul. And he never let it poison them. Yep. And if he did, we don't know about it. Right. You know, I'm sure they had rows and stuff. Yeah. As you Brits call it. Rose. Disagreements. Rouse. No, we don't say Rose. We say Row. The Rouse same is as a fucking, you. That's an Italian restaurant up in... Uh, <laughs> in Har- I'm surprised Queen's in your top five of a all Queen. Time. Well, because Queen, Brian May and Freddie incredible. Mercury. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this. Freddie is a brilliant singer. Best front man of all time. Look, you, you're a jock. You know, you're, you're a regular jock. People tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You've got a lifeguard fucking t-shirt on. I worked hard for this you know, t-shirt, man. Um, you see my karate bag. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... So the fact there was this this homosexual <laughs> yeah. from Morocco fronting from Zanzibar this, Zanzibar even yes. weirder yes 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 fronting this sort of heavy metal I mean it was, a, it was a great combination filled with a stadium of straight guys going fuck yeah, yeah! I know <laughs> and telling their parents I'm going to see Queen yeah, yeah but but, but I, his harmonies were just you know and come on Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. is and you know what people in... Do you know what Bohemian Rhapsody is called within the Queen camp? No. Bo Rap. Oh, that's cool. They call it Bo Rap. That's like when you do a movie and they're like, you <laughs> yeah. know, when we were working on... Uh, like, would it be good? <laughs> Ewo. <laughs> Instead of Iwo Jima, they got to shorten every right, single yeah. thing. No, like, no, they, they if you wrote Ruby Tuesday, you're like, well, the other night Rude we were two. performing Rue 2. <laughs> it's like, I hate... I hate I, yeah, don't waste any syllables on us, guys. Right. No, Bo Rap. What are you most proud of? You got to take one thing you produce, put it in a time capsule, and that's the only thing they can play at your funeral. Ooh, um, Man. Randomly, big country. The reason being is that before the song in a big country, I uh, not Johnny Thunders, huh? Oh, Johnny Thunders! No, you can't put your arms around a memory. It was a fucking great song. It's fucking great guy. Oh, it's was, just tragic yes. and great, but there's the, it couldn't I was end that any, close to taking heroin. I went, nah, no thanks. Thank it could God, not I have didn't. ended any other way. No, For no, the moment, it, it actually yeah. lasted longer than I thought. Yeah. The moment anybody had ever met him, they went, yeah, yeah, whoa. But, but he was great. And have you heard that song? You can't put your yeah. arms around a memory. Beautiful, great song, beautiful song. A big country only because they. Um, you didn't do their first album. The I did first, first album was co- what was the ep- the crossing in a big country. The album is called the crossing. Yeah. The song was called In a Big Country. Yeah, that was a huge hit. Huge hit. Actually, they had lots of other hits. included, But, but the, that was the one that hit here in the that, States. That was the one that hit in the States, which was a bit of a pity because they were considered a novelty band because, you know, when you have the song and the album and the, al- and the, the band, song and the band name, it can't be the same, yeah. you know. Um, Isn't that your job as a producer to make them change the name of the song? You know what? I probably should have done, but you couldn't really. Big and funky. <laughs> But but he wrote that song after I gave them the sound. Oh yeah, on on a song called Fields of Fire, which we did one song to start with. That hit here too, and um, yeah, but that was that, like the little little one that came after the big ding, one. Ding, 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 Very ding, Irish, ding. yeah, actually, yeah, Scottish. But but all that. Um, all right, it's a fucking island. Stop breaking my balls about like Ireland, it. England. You know what it isn't? American, buddy. <laughs> I'll play some fucking bad brains for you on the way That's out. Right, you want a goddamn no. real band? No, I, I don't think California really did that great with punk. Really? Well, Bad Brains. No, no, see. give me the. Give, give, New York had the, you know, Ramones. Um, Ramones, vastly underrated pop band. Fantastic pop band. Yeah. Everybody I mean, says The Clash is the only thing that matters, but I'll take the Ramones. No, over I the take Clash. the Ramones over The Clash. Yeah, me too. Beth, great melodies. I mean, The but Clash. Although, had some when great... The Clash goes reggae, 
like straight to hell and stuff. Straight to I go, oh. ooh, ooh, I wish this ah, I wish you guys did this a little more. Yeah, I well, uh it's evolution rock. Like yeah. revo- revo- I said evolution revolution rock <laughs> and straight to hell. Like when they go reggae, they do it better than anybody did it. They were great. Way better I mean, than they... the Stones doing oh. oh Cherry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well they smoked a lot of weed. Yeah. Uh Ramones, my Ramones, top five. Fantastic. I'll go uh yeah, my top five. I'm gonna get laughed out of the fucking building. Oh, some heavy metal. Because I like, band. yeah, yeah, big hair, like, ringer, slinger, dinger, pinger. All three of those. All those, those are Daffy Duck songs. There's no, right? de- there's never been a good band with uh at the end of their name. Er. <laughs> Hashtag er. <laughs> First, there is a silly way. S- uh, uh, winger. Were they any good? Um, foreigner. No. A lot of heads on fucking foreigner. Watch your mouth, there, son. You're just mad because you lost the Revolutionary War. <laughs> Let's just go back to what this is all about. <laughs> you may have won the war, you, but me, Piers Morgan, you, and fucking you, the guy who's doing the Daily Show at the moment. You fought in the <laughs> snow with bright red uniforms. Like, that's our fault. You stood in a straight line. We you know, didn't know we started. We didn't know if it was fair. It's so funny. I, had, I know nothing about English history in America because we were never taught it. Because we uh, lost, I think. We came over here because we didn't like the way shit was going on over there. I and you guys came know. over here and said, you got to pay your taxes here like you do over there. I pay lots of taxes. We said, get the problem. fuck out of here. Yeah. Uh, and then we Is had a right? war over it. And yeah. now we're taxed. And everyone here that's wealthy gets taxed 50% anyway. Yeah. And there's a tax on everything you buy. Taxation without representation. It's represented very well here. Are you here. a libertarian? Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, I can't divide politics into two houses. The no. Zodiac's 12, and that shit's batshit crazy to me. Yeah, that's ridiculous. If the Zodiac's 12, and like, I can't say it's the who. Same you, as religion. Like, oh, really? Because I'm a Gemini. I get it. <laughs> like, no, what? No, I'm not a fucking Gemini. I'm a human being. Yeah. So the, to divide the earth into Republican Democrat to me is no. so absurd that I would like to think. Yeah. I, I don't know why anybody would legitimize either party with their affiliation. Uh, my top five. Okay. Number uh, one, the Beatles. The uh, Beatles, yeah. It's not even close. Uh, who? I'll put the Who, but oddly, I don't think there's a great Who album. No, no, which I, is very strange. Uh, the, Pete gave it a shot. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, all right, I got, uh, I got you two. Really? In my top five, certainly. Okay. Uh, made, means a lot to me. I'm gonna go Springsteen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's not a bad. I love Springsteen. Oh, okay. I think you're but, but I think he's. Blo- uh, I think he's what a lot of people say Dylan is. It, Born to Run, yeah. if you just read the lyrics, oh, Born to Run, for is me, is, fucking crazy. is by far his yeah. best album. Yeah. I mean, it really is. And, and, and he's done some, I mean, the, Philadelphia he's done a lot of bad and all stuff. that is great. Oh, he has. When, when he tried to do that folk stuff, I mean, I, I worked with the Pogues, and, and the Pogues was so great. And when Springsteen brought the accordions and the banjos in, it was embarrassing. I heard him playing accordion by himself. I had a bootleg. There's this great place in the village. Second generation records or something on right. Thompson or Sullivan Street, right in that area. And there was this, it was Springsteen live in Rome by himself. And he opens the show speaking uh, uh, Italian for like four straight minutes. Right. Fluent Italian. Astounding. Bruce Springsteen? The, the, yes. The, 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 the guy Bruce, from New Jersey? Yes. Okay. He speaks in Italian. He's asking them, uh, he tells them he's by himself. I'm only going to play a guitar, harmonica a banjo, and an accordion. Please, no photography. Please. Right. I beg of you, please, no photography. And I need it completely quiet. Silencio, please. Grazie, grazie. Vut. And then he does all, every Springsteen song. It's like two hours wow. of a man alone in Rome. And you can hear a pin drop. And to hear like brilliant the skies yeah. completely stripped down. And he's just screaming like this giant Roman Colosseum. You go, oh my God. God, he's going to get a fucking divorce. <laughs> this is brutal. Like, it's one time, the, yeah. the song one, like, times ten. Right. Because right, it's much right. more literal, yeah. but not, you know. Yeah. Is, is it you I don't trust? Because I damn sure I don't trust yeah. myself. And, you know, all this great stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, Beatles, Who, You 2 Springsteen. I know, it's so poppy. Uh, one, two, three, four. Only room for one more. 